gang, it's Brennan Lee Mulligan telling you that you're about to watch the first episode of Dimension 20, The Unsleeping City, Chapter 2, a sequel season to The Unsleeping City, which is available in its entirety on the Dimension 20 YouTube channel and on Dropout. It's an 18-episode adventure around the magical city of New York. Hey, what question here? Featuring Emily Axford, Allie Beardsley, Brian Murphy, Zach Oyama, Siobhan Thompson, and Lou Wilson. And spoiler alert, two of these players are playing different characters than they did in the first season. To watch the rest of it, the Adventuring Party Talkbacks, and every other season of Dimension 20, just sign up for Dropout using the link in the description. But for now, enjoy the episode, Intrepid Heroes! Hello, one and all, and welcome to a brand new season in a mighty familiar setting that you know and love. Welcome to season two of The Unsleeping City! <sighs> Remote style! I'm your humble dungeon master, Brennan Lee Mung. With me as always are our intrepid heroes. Say hi, intrepid heroes! Hi, hi intrepid, intrepid heroes! heroes. Uh, uh g going around the table with us today, we have Zach Oyama. Hello. Emily Axford. Hello. <laughs> Lou Wilson. Get it out. Hello. Javon Thompson. Hello. I didn't say it that weird. Brian Murphy. <laughs> Hi, I messed up giving myself a haircut. Please don't dunk on me on the internet. Thank you so much. Ooh, thank, God. Right. thank God. Thank God for Wow, that. broke the format and... for your vanity. I love my husband. <laughs> and Allie Beardsley. Hello. <laughs> I, I too messed up on my haircut. No, you did that on purpose. You like that. Yeah, it's true. It's absolutely on purpose. I paid for it. <laughs> um, uh, well, it, as you see us here uh, floating uh, over our beloved unsleeping city, uh, you may wonder, hey, what happened to the Dimensional Dome? Where the heck are these uh, fine people? <laughs> Well, uh, uh, I'm glad you're asking that question because it means that the reality of COVID-19 has placed this far in the past and you're discovering this piece of artifact media from this time period. Uh, it's not safe for us to be close to each other, but <laughs> we weren't gonna let that stop us from coming back to this mystical, magical place, uh, uh, a place of fantasy behind the mundane set in New York City, but a New York City perhaps a little more magical than could at first be expected. Yes, indeed, this is season two of uh, Dimension 20's urban fantasy adventure extravaganza. And without further ado, we are going to dive back into it. We descend on a blazing hot summer's day over the New York City skyline. The pavement so toasty you could fry an egg on it. And right out of the gate, I am going to throw a curveball at one of our PCs. You know it, you love it, because check it out. Over the, the hot skyline, we notice that we don't, there's a lot of things we do see and don't see. The, the street are covered in, uh, uh, you know, the street signs that we are familiar, but the style of fashion is a little bit different. We see someone walking down the street with a huge boom box on their shoulder, uh, playing music. And indeed, picture, if you will, on the bottom of your screen in your mental camera, a little 1994 comes up. <laughs> um, uh, and around 30 years old, uh, Kingston Brown is walking down the street. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, a, a completely uh, uh, a, a Kingston Brown, not concerned with being the voice of New York, not concerned with magic at all. This is a Kingston Brown who's around 30 years old and uh, is just trying to, to get where he's going. Uh, uh, Lou, could you please go ahead and describe this version of your character for us? Okay, so 90s Kingston for sure has a high top. It's like a good, yes. like, but it's like one of those dope ones that's kind of like, it's got like a weird, like almost like an, uh, uh, like a Lego shape, it like kind of like uh, it's like kind of like angled and swooped, Amazing. Uh, like a like a thin gold chain over like you know a very loud like kind of color blocked like red, yellow, green shirt and like 
cool, like, you know, a pair of like pastel shorts and like uh, uh, Jordans with high, uh, with high socks. Incredible. Um, uh, Kingston, um, you are hustling down the street from a previous appointment. Um, uh, you have for probably a, a handful of years now already been working as a nurse at St. Mm -hmm. Owens. Uh, you're hustling outside right now to go hit up a payphone because you're expecting a call. Um, and uh, you see, as you approach, um, uh, normally you, you have like bad luck with payphones. But as you get there, you see this sort of like line of people waiting for the payphone out in front. Yeah. Um, and this is like an important call coming through. Oh man, come on now. <laughs> see, this is why I gotta buy one of those cell phones that everyone's going on about. <laughs> ah, God damn. Um, you arrive in front of the payphone. Um, as you arrive there, um, you see the person right in front of you, uh, sort of like suited businessman, looks at his watch and goes, I, I don't got time for this, splits, just as the woman in front of him looks and across the street and goes, oh my God, Marcy, there you are. I, I, was, I was about to, runs off. And the person in front of you goes, oh, great, great, great. It's actually on the phone. Goes, good, glad to hear it, awesome. All right, I'll be there as soon as I can. Click, and a line of three people disappears right in front of you. Must be my lucky day. Okay. Uh, uh, the phone rings in front of you. The call you were expecting comes through. You pick up the phone uh, yeah. and you hear the voice of your cousin Janice uh, on the line go, uh, almost on the verge of like joyful tears, going, oh, <laughs> Kason, I can't, I, I just got off the phone. Yeah. I got the job at Cornell, at Cornell Medical. <laughs> Yes, yes. I can't oh. believe it, Kingston. They 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 called me up. They they talked about the 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 qualifications. I they had the phone interview. I thought I was gonna have to drive all the way to Ithaca to try and get the the the, the interview in person. They hired me over the phone, Kingston. I mean, what did you do? I, I didn't I, I didn't do anything, Janice. I mean, it is all you. All right, this was it was entirely you. I mean, you had the qualifications, you did the work, and now you get the results. I am so incredibly proud of you. Uh, God, you were going to do great things up there. Great things. Uh, she, you can hear her emotion. Um, uh, you can hear her husband, who she got married to less than six months ago, in the background. Um, you know for a fact that this job is gonna be completely life-changing for her. Yeah. She says, Kingston, I don't know what I'm ever gonna be able to do to repay this. Because, listen, I know that this job didn't get offered to me first. And you just hear that warm silence on the phone of her knowing who they offered this job to first. Well, you know, um, at uh, whoever maybe it was supposed to go to, uh, uh, life has other plans for them. So this is, this is what you deserve and this is what you need to do. So uh, you all have a safe trip up there and you, you call me when you get up there, all right? I'm gonna I'm come visit or something, you know? I, <laughs> I don't know what's in in Ithaca, but uh, you know it'd be it'd be nice to find out. She laughs and says, "She says I'll believe Kingston Brown leaves New York City the day I see it." Yeah, uh, well, I'm looking for a reason to go, so why don't you come give me one? <laughs> she laughs and says, "All right, I'll I'll let you know as soon as we land in. We have a couple days before the job starts. We're gonna start getting packed and start looking for places out there. I yeah. love you so much. Hey, I love you too." Um, the phone hangs up. Um, uh, this was the call you were waiting for. You obviously, you gave as glowing a recommendation as you could, and obviously Cornell had reached out to you based on your record at St. Owens. Uh, what's what's going through a young Kingston's mind after that phone call? Uh, I think whatever doubt or uh, questioning Kingston might have of like, uh, of whether or not he should have taken that opportunity. Uh, I think he just keeps hearing like, you know, the joy in Janice's voice and is like, this is 
how it's supposed to be. Kingston, you head off. You were way downtown uh, taking care of some cert stuff uh, based yeah. on the hospital. There was a sort of a course happening down here. Um, so it's a long walk back to, uh, uh, it's, you got it, you got it. So um, probably you're the closest place because you're near City Hall, actually. Yeah. Probably the best thing is the four or five headed back up to Harlem. Um, Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, you, you're heading over to Brooklyn Bridge uh, and you start walking down. A little bit distracted. Um, go ahead and make a perception check for me with disadvantage. Uh, am I using the stats, use my now stats? Oh, you don't have advantage on perception checks yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, I like, do I, but do you want me to add my bonuses? Oh, or oh no yes. Bonuses? Uh, but let's, you only have a plus two proficiency bonus right now. Great. Uh, then that is an eight. So you're a little bit distracted, uh, uh, thinking about some stuff you got going on. You got another shift coming up at the hospital. Um, you know, I think life for this Kingston Brown is busy in a healthy and good way. Um, and, you know, the, the job that is now going to be the foundation of a solid family life for your cousin who's now moving to Ithaca. Uh, that that was a big opportunity. And the fact that you are feeling sort of exclusively joy for that, I think there's a little bit of daydreaminess in Kingston. Yeah. Which is what makes it really weird when you look up and realize that um, the lights aren't on in the subway station you're in. Uh, are there other people in the subway station? You look around, it doesn't look like it. Uh, I mean, the MTA has always got problems though. So it's yeah. maybe the lights are just messed up here, but you don't. It is, God, all right, well, okay, well. Uh, there's nobody, like it's just dark and I can't. You could go check out an MTA booth maybe and, and, yeah. and see, yeah. I think like after a second or two of like just standing in darkness, I am like, oh, all right, well. What's going on? Uh, excuse me. Uh, and I'll like go walk toward the nearest MTA booth. Um, you walk to the MTA booth, you look around and see you're in a subway station that says uh, City Hall Station. Beautiful tile work, arches everywhere, very Art Deco or beautiful sort of civic structures in here. Um, the MTA booth is empty when you get down here. Um, and as you approach to kind of look in it and step away, um, you hear a kerplunk of uh, a token falling through and one of the turnstiles uh, uh, is accessible, but you didn't put a token in it. You just heard the kachunk. Someone's must've been like lodged in there, but it's a free, yeah. it's a free token into the subway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know take advantage of this fortuitous luck. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good day. Uh, you move through the turnstile, and now it's like darker down here because now you're you're past the turnstile into like the station proper, and everything's white tile and white marble down here. So you look around, and it's it, it's very like. It's illuminated, even though there's no light sources down here, just because of all the reflective, shiny tile of kind of just the bouncing sunlight coming in from way yeah. far away. You get down to the subway platform. You don't see any lights down here. There's no people down here left. You see across the the rail, like the rails, across the tracks of the subway. Uh, there's not another platform. So this is one of those old subway stations that only has the platform on one side and then sort of a wall. Yeah. But you look down and across the rails, there is like an opening in the wall that looks like a, a burrow or something, but you see that it's caked with stuff. There's like a glittering child's top and there's like a frame a gilded like portrait frame there's a model airplane and jams in another place there's like a puppet and there's like a golden candelabra but the 
the walls and ceiling and floor of the tunnel are so jammed with kind of these beautiful objects that you actually can't see dirt in them. And the tunnels are like, honestly, like about six or, or maybe six and a half feet tall. Mm -hmm. um, it's like an enormous opening across from you. And it's, this is, this has now gotten to the point where it's left, it's left what you can explain now. It's, yeah. it's one of the weirdest things you've seen. Uh, and there's still no one around. I am alone in a dark, uh, I think, yeah, Kingston's going to like curiously like try and see as much as he can without like leaving the platform. Uh, you see light down in there um, and you hear a bit of, you hear some like music playing from in there and the light is flickering from the end of the tunnel and you hear a kind of... <laughs> Like a jovial laugh from off in the distance. Uh, I'm gonna, Kingston's gonna uh, like kind of slide off the platform. Uh, hey, uh, if y'all if y'all are doing work down here, y'all should put a put a, 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 a work order sign because it just it, like it seems like the, the the station is open, but you know you don't want people coming down here. It's all dark and and tripping. Hello. <laughs> Uh, more, you see more light and you can hear more noise. Um, it's, for a moment you hear s some music and some other voices. And I think there, it occurs to Kingston that there might be some like younger kids or some high schoolers who are like messing around down here where it's yeah. not safe. What are y'all, what are y'all, what are y'all doing down in here? Should, shouldn't y'all be in, in school or something? Uh, hey, uh, and I'm gonna, I'll full walk in being like, you know, because I'm already pretty tall, like precarious of my like high top, I'll like kind of cork my <laughs> head to the side and kind of like uh, walk in. Uh, hey, you, y'all, I, I think there's some kind of work being done here. Y'all, I don't think we should be down here. Uh, you walk in, as you emerge through this time, you go through the time for a while, get glittering objects, scrolls, things like that. You emerge into a chamber which is an enormous automat, like the kind of like World War II era wall of like glass. It's like an automat is one of those like automated diners. So it's just mm -hmm. rows on rows of little slices of pie and cakes and things like that behind little glass doors uh, that, ha that, that have coin operated slots. Like back during the forties, you would just like walk into this like 24 hour place, put a nickel into a thing and open a glass door with a slice of pie behind it and like help yourself. Yeah. Huge automat. There are rows of ruby and gold encrusted Revolutionary War era cannons. Um, there is a, an enormous 14 foot long golden boom box that is playing like old school, even at this point, old school, like 70s into 80s, like Grandmaster Flash hip hop. And it's just booming out. It's kind of fun. It's like a fun trip, but it's yeah. playing to nobody. The floor is littered with subway tokens that have kind of piled up in the corners everywhere here. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Kingston is just, uh, uh, just silently trying to make sense of where he is and how and what this place is. Is what is there food in the automats? Yeah, totally. It's enormous. It's like rows upon rows upon rows, tons and tons of stuff. Uh, can I look at what's in the automats? Um, you see that there is a small apple pie that's like a hand a hand turned pie yeah. that is steaming in the automat like it's fresh bait um and you look and see an old glass bottle of milk next to it um and you, oh yeah <laughs> the, the glass bottle is old but the milk looks fresh um and you look and see that there is a metal there's like a door behind it because people load the automat from the back. So you get a feeling that you could look in the back there um, yeah. uh, and like push and see the space through the other side if you were to open your little glass door and get this pie. Uh, I mean, damn, these teens, how do you bring milk into subway stations now? But I mean, uh, I mean uh, yeah, can I, uh, I'll push that, I'll push that thing 
Um, uh, do you do you put a coin into the slot to operate? Yeah, the I, I put a I put a. <laughs> let me see what these teens are doing with this pie. Uh, <laughs> I, I put a coin in and try to get this pie out. Thirty year old <laughs> Kingston is like present day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Hold on one second. What do we uh, need to see? Just give me a pie. Just let me eat the pie. Cool. <laughs> you put it in. Don't eat strange pie. <laughs> Don't eat pie that you found in the subway. I don't, hey, this is a good day. And um, now there's just fresh pie and a, a glass bottle of milk. I, you know. Uh, Sniff um, the milk first, please. Uh, you push it in, open the glass door, you have fresh pie, and the milk is like cold. And yeah, you see that there's a metal back that you could, you think you could kind of like slide open. Yeah, I'll slide, I'll take the pie out and then slide the, slide the metal back. Looking through the metal, you see a sunny field of grass. What? <laughs> with a small homestead in it. There is uh, no city skyline, but you do see like other other kind of stuff around. Off in the distance, you see some buildings closer. This is not at the right level. You're deep underground. I'm like, Kingston is gonna like jam as much of his head as he can into like the like slot just to like make sure that what he's seeing is what he's seeing. You jam your head to try to see what you're seeing. You, it's too small. You can't like get your, yeah. your head can get in, but your shoulders can't get through. Yeah. So you're looking out, the Dutch woman is wearing like, there's a, a, a there's like a young Dutch milkmaid wearing like a bonnet, like a colonial era bonnet. Comes out, she's hanging laundry on a line. There's a goat nearby. She turns to look at you and it like cocks her head to the side. Hello, hello? Hello? Uh, and, and she speaks a string of Dutch and waves over at you. I full like rip my head out and slam the automat closed. Um, <laughs> and uh, like, yeah, and is, is there, is there, what else is going on in this room? You hear, there's a, a large door. There's another one of these treasure burrows that leads yeah. out. And you hear through that, another booming laugh going. <laughs> and you see that a button presses on the boom box behind you with no one touching it. Um, and uh, a new track, uh, some Grandmaster Flash comes on um, and you hear a voice booming deeper through that chamber, um, sort of singing along with the music, it sounds like. Uh, yeah. Just this booming voice going like, <laughs> Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think it is gingerly going to like get closer to the source of that sound. You move through the burrow on a mountain of subway tokens in a huge dome with the celestial heights and clouds on the top of it, gilded columns everywhere. A just suspended like subway car is just resting on a, the, the dome is large enough that there's just a subway car in here as like an object of interest in this massive dome. Um, the subway car seems to be studded with gems. Uh, it says it has X as the letter on it, which is not a New York City subway line. A massive serpentine dragon. Pearl white scales mixed with azure blue and emerald green. Long whiskers, both a furry like beard and sort of droopy mustache, but then also like long catfish style whiskers. A set of a set of like six horns coming off of a head that is at once draconian, but also kind of canine, but with almost like feline eyes multiple limbs, like about eight different limbs. Uh, his claws are massive, but compared to the length of this giant serpentine body, uh, he is, uh, his limbs are like kind of scattered few and far between. Mm -hmm. His head is the size of a taxi cab. And he rears up, looks at you as you come in and goes, 
<laughs> Kingston Brown from uptown. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's me. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you the dragon from that movie? Huh? <laughs> the Never Ending Story? Is that? <laughs> are you the dragon from the Never? Is this? Is the Never Ending Story real? What's happening right now? Did you trap a Dutch woman <laughs> down here? <laughs> What's going did on? I, did I trap a Dutch woman? Well, there's oh. a Dutch woman in a box. No, 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 no. Did you go for the for the, the the Dutch apple pie? Yeah. That's no. She's fine. She's in New Amsterdam. You're completely fine. She's she's not here. She's not in this place. Well, she is in this place, but she's not in this time. What? What? What is it? I'm, hey. Um, don't no, eat me. I'm Please not don't Falcor eat me. I don't want to. What's happening? Oh, oh, sorry. Let me explain. Um, the dragon greatly reduces his size uh, to the point now where he's still very long and serpentine, but now, now his his head and sort of front quarters are more the size of like a tiger or some kind of similar animal. He goes, Kingston Brown. What a honest pleasure to meet you. An honor, truly. I am the dragon of Bleecker Street, and you, you have a very special life ahead of you. Um, he reaches down uh, and from the massive pile of subway tokens pulls a single gleaming subway token. Um, he grabs a piece of leather, spins it through the hole in the center of the subway token, uh, extends it to you, um, and says, this is a gift from me to you, uh, and puts it over your head. Um, you begin to hear voices speaking to you, um, voices of people far overhead and all around, and they it doesn't feel like you're hearing things. It feels like you are hearing things. You're just now hearing the voices of people out in the city. Uh, the dragon smiles at you and says, I, uh, I, I, I'm aware. I'm sorry that I was sort of having a good time. I've, I've been uh, listening to some of my favorite tracks um, and I've uh, been enjoying some of the Automat's fine foods. Life is for the living, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, and you got, you got good, good taste. Um, what, what is this and what, what am I, uh, who, who, what are these, who is this? Oh, oh, um, let us have a, a walk through uh, my chambers, you and I. I have much to tell you. Um, and the dragon puts a reassuring claw on your shoulder, and it doesn't, it, it feels um, cool and scaly, but reassuring. There is something about the dragon's claw that doesn't alarm you like it otherwise might. And the absurdity of all this, somehow the coin around your neck anchors you in a way. And the dragon goes, there's much to explain, and you have already paid for your pie. Let us eat, and I will talk to you and tell you what it is you are now seeing. Uh, over the course of the next hour or so, <laughs> Kingston walks and talks with this ancient dragon about the nature of the unsleeping city and the fact that for many long years there has not been a Vox Populi within the unsleeping city, but there greatly needs to be. As the conversation arrives at sort of na a natural conclusion, Kingston's questions all get either wholly or in most cases only partially answered. Um, the, uh, the dragon has a massive sort of silver cauldron full of ice cream. You're now back on the subway platform outside the mm -hmm. horde, and he's sort of stretching out his full form on the subway platform. Um, uh, uh, what, what, what shape is Kingston in after the dragon divulges all of this information? I think like, you know, I think uh, very much overwhelmed, but I think like 
if this like token seems to be anchoring me uh i mean i think that for the most part a lot of what kingston's hearing is that there's the ability to do good uh and there's the opportunity to do good uh and as scary as that may be there's also something exciting uh about that um the dragon looks up at you and smiles um go ahead and make a medicine check for me Uh, that's going to be a, a 25. Um, as cool. Kingston is sort of meditating on the, 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 the lifesaver to get out of the total collapse of your mind when faced with the fact that everything you ever knew about the nature of the world is wrong, that, that Kingston's lifesaver is this is a way to help people more than I can now. Uh, the dragon smiles, um, and you see, much like a reptile, it, some of his scales kind of molt off. And you see the dragon takes like a deep, wheezy breath. Goes, uh, you all right? What? You are, uh, I, can I push? I don't know where this uh, dragon's lungs are, uh, but can I push my ear up against its chest? <laughs> uh, yeah, you see, you go up, you try to find where its lungs would be in this long, long body, um, and you push your ear up against it. On a 25, um, you you hear a rasp uh, from within the dragon's breathing, and you also hear a heartbeat that to you sounds, for a creature of this size, I mean, you're not a veterinarian, but... <laughs> yeah. You know, like, uh, you're like, that's a that's a pretty weak heartbeat and the blood pressure is pretty low. Yeah. Uh, you don't seem to be doing so well. I mean, I don't, I don't know. You were, I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe this is normal for you, but it doesn't sound good. The dragon looks up and smiles at you and says, I, I, I am doing very well, actually. The, uh, the past few days have been very, very rewarding. Knowing that my time is coming means I have been able to uh, engage in my vices more than normal. Big bowls of ice cream, trips to yeah. the automat, the, uh, filling my time with my favorite memories, the best music, the best art, the best books and plays and music and... Um, and you see as the dragon says that his scales shimmer and you see like motes of light and hear like ragtime and jazz and hip hop and you see vaudeville and Broadway shows. Uh, you see like street art, spray paint, but then the turn of the century, you see like ticker tape parades, all these things throughout the history of New York City. Um, and you see the dragon looks up at you and says, my only fear was I wouldn't make it long enough to find the right one, the right one. And you are the right one, Kingston. <sighs> Frightening times are coming. There will be friends and allies in the unsleeping city for you, and they need you. That will be your journey, I'm afraid, Kingston. There will always be those who need you. And you will have to decide how much of yourself you can give. Because it's always nice to keep a little slice of pie for yourself. <laughs> Eats a little piece of pie. Um, this is my city. This is my community. And for everything that it's given me, I'm ready to give it right back. 
I, I think. I mean, I, I really don't understand. So there's just they're they're goblins just out there in just in New York City. Extremely. Just, I, I know I've asked this before, but just extremely to be out there. hundred percent. And I, there's I, I, another I, 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 police, I, police department. Casey, I'm so sorry, but actually, I'm sorry. This looks like, it looks like your train might be. Oof. The dragon vanishes as a train speeds by. Kingston, you're standing on the platform of the Brooklyn Bridge uh, 4 5 station, and the four train pulls into the station, and you watch scintillating motes of dry shed scales filled with memories <gasps> fade off. You've still got the coin around your neck. I am not going to get used to this. I'm not going to get used to this at all. And you wake up three years after the events of the Unsleeping City season one <laughs> in your apartment in Harlem. Hell yes. Uh, and we're gonna cut over. I'll roll a little die here. Okay. Um, uh, it is the uh, it is the morning of October. 30th, three years after the events of season one. Um, it's a beautiful fall in New York. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, fall in New York is so wonderful. The so air Halloween is crisp. Halloween is tomorrow. Halloween is tomorrow. Uh, the, the group, the group chat thread of the champions of New York has, pro even, even those of you who have retreated a little bit from magical life know that Halloween is tomorrow and Halloween is always a shit show and some magical business happens. Um, we descend on this crisp, bright fall morning, sun shining, New Yorkers walking around in light sweaters and jackets, uh, the best, the, the perfect time to be in the city. Um, we move across the East River from Harlem all the way down to beautiful brown stones and ivy and trees, uh, to the wonderful Clinton Hill neighborhood of Brooklyn. And we see out on the corner, there is a uh, tall building of apartments. And on top of it, uh, a miniature clock tower. And we approach the glass face of the clock tower, which is frosted white glass. So it's uh, not completely transparent, but light comes through. And we move through that clock tower to see a gorgeous apartment. Uh, there are plants everywhere around, uh, away from the clock tower face, behind the clock tower. There are windows on the other side with rows and rows of plants suspended. Uh, and we see a massive kind of open complex, open plan apartment um, with uh, two figures lying in a giant bed together. Um, uh, one of whom uh, uh, should be described by Mr. Zach Oyama. Zach, can you describe your character? Uh, yeah. Um, hey, what's going on? I'm Ricky, uh, as you all know. <laughs> uh, Ricky, uh, just as strong as ever. Uh, you know, absolutely ripped still. Um, uh, fully, uh, fully asleep. Has no, just the type of person who just lays down in bed and fully falls asleep uh, for maybe... <laughs> as long as he needs or longer. Uh, no, nothing in his brain will slow him down in that way. Uh, Ricky's just fully passed out asleep. Um, maybe smiling in his sleep. <laughs> um, uh, what does Ricky dream of? <laughs> his life is a dream, what does he dream of? It's the, the exact same picture of... <laughs> Um, and then, by the way, I was actually mistaken. There are two figures in the bed and a third on the bed because Ox the Dalmatian is curled up at the foot of the bed. Um, you see, uh, Ricky, you're fast asleep. Um, next to you, sleeping oh so peacefully as well, is the current head and chairwoman of the Gramercy Occult Society, Esther Sinclair. Um, Esther has fully barnacled, uh, like fetal position around you in her sleep. Um, you see her constant uh, uh, internal wizard work has her her brows. She's almost always in like rapid eye movement as she sleeps, thinking of something. But uh, doesn't whatever the opposite of a furrowed brow is is what Ricky has. <laughs> <laughs> a loose brow, a sprawling brow. Yeah. 
Um, uh, you see that uh, Esther has her hair wrapped in silk with like star and moon, like wizard patterns around it. And is like sleeping next to you, breathing very slowly, but still working on something in her mind. Um, and whatever it is, as you slowly wake up, you see whatever she's working on in her mind, she solves it and her brow unfurls and she smiles and just... <laughs> and it softly snores a little bit. Around you are uh, like huge, beautiful, like deep, dark, reclaimed wood shelves that kind of are structured on like that that very chic, like exposed pipe, you know, like that sort of like uh, uh, pipe and, and exposed wood and exposed brick. Huge collections of tomes are here, her like personal arcane library. Uh, on her bedside table, you see there's like glass of water, humidifier, glasses and contacts and, um, uh, you, you know, a bunch of other, uh, and her silver baseball bat arcane focus leaning up against the bedside table. Um, and it's a, this place is like plants, lovely furniture, big old TV, magic books, floating, hovering arcane thing, huge workout area over in a corner um, uh, with a ton of weights everywhere. Um, uh, and you wake up as Ox gets up first, licks your face uh, for another beautiful morning. Yeah, Ricky's eyes just immediately open. <laughs> he licks Ox back. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pat's ox on the head, and then it's like, all right, it's time to rise and grind. Uh, <laughs> Ricky um, goes, he has his like uh, morning routine where he gets his uh, his coffee going, and as, as soon as he starts the coffee timer, he just goes and does pull-ups until it's done. Um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, and then he, uh, you know, just carries around his morning. Um, I think he probably gets a shake going as well. Hell yeah. Um, the shake going is Esther's alarm. Um, she <laughs> uh, wakes up as the shake goes. <sighs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Another perfect day. Good morning, sweetie. And she uh, floats out of bed, um, uh, levitates over somewhere. She's trying to hand her a coffee, like, in the sky. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. She takes, mm, perfect. Um, and scoots over to a very sunlit window uh, surrounded uh, by plants, other things like that. Uh, your guys' uh, morning routine is uh, very synchronized. Uh, she comes over. Uh, alights on a chair, a uh, big uh, armchair, um, and takes a bunch of uh, uh, sort of like arcane stuff, puts it to the side, takes coffee, takes a little snack of some kind of like uh, cashews and Brazil nuts, just something to like get her body started. And it's like, okay. As she's snacking, I, I start trying to like sketch her uh, with um, charcoal. And my, my big, uh, my new hobby is uh, art, just the idea of art. Uh, I'm just taking a stab at uh, drawing her, concentrating really hard. Uh, yeah, you see that Esther has, um, still has a little bit of that punk edge, but also is now like cozy core punk, like long, long like cardigan that she's wearing. Um, uh, she sort of smiles, looks over at you and says, should I, should I hold a pose over here? Is there some sort of way I should, I should be, or am I um, free to? Yeah, I, you know, from my, what I understand, it, it seems like people talk about people staying still, but uh, if you feel like moving around, maybe I'll just figure it out. Sounds. Uh, uh, it could be sounds... cool if you're moving around in the picture, but I'm not sure how to do that yet. Uh, she says, I'll, "I'll try to keep it still here." Your guys' morning progresses. Uh, uh, Esther grabs some breakfast for herself, dives into reviewing stuff. Uh, a lot of her work these days is not only arcane, but like running the occult society. You see, uh, you know, a couple minutes later, um, she grabs on the she grabs her phone, FaceTimes her mom real quick. Uh, Gabriella Sinclair, no longer one of the furies of Tompkins Square Park, but rather the curse having been broken by Cugrash, uh, Gabriella is now uh, living elsewhere in Brooklyn. You see that she goes like, hey mom, thanks for jumping on the call real quick. I just wanted to go over some of this stuff with you because it's a little bit baffling to me, but I wanted to check and see if you would be familiar with any of this stuff. And is like 
screen sharing with her mom from like a laptop, uh, some like arcane symbols and stuff. Uh, her mom, Gabriella, uh, as like, the phone is swiveled around, looks over and goes, uh, is that Ricky I see in the background? Good morning, Ricky. Hey, how's it going? Um, just uh, sketching. I'm going to incorporate you into the sketch. Uh, you see that uh, Gabriella smiles and goes, oh, that's so sweet, Ricky. Oh, my goodness. You look amazing. You look wonderful. I'm doing Please. squats while I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see that Gabriella looks at Esther and uh, uh, goes like, oh, Ricky, I wanted to send you something I was looking up and you see a text shows up on your phone from Esther's mom. Um, she says, there was something very interesting that's happened in our neighborhood. A jewelry store opened up. It's very interesting. There's a whole new jewelry shop around the corner from me that opened up. And I was wondering, you know, I need to go, you understand that I was cursed as to be a sort of fury, like this sort of sorceress spirit of New York City for a long time. So I'm just trying to kind of pick up the pieces, start back up, get back into the world of mortals. So Did to I speak. talk to you about jewelry? Did we well, have no, a conversation it's just... about jewelry? <laughs> well, no, because you were saying you might want to lend a hand, and I, I have some jewelry shopping that I want to do, and I was thinking that maybe you would. I'm not, if, I mean, I'll go with you. I don't know that I'm necessary. You see, uh, Esther says, oh, that's all for now, mom. Thank you. Click, and it's the, um, <laughs> it's the I button. I just forget. Did we talk about? <laughs> Esther looks and says, you didn't forget anything. Sweetie, you didn't forget, a, you didn't forget a single thing. You forgot nothing. Oh, my okay. mom, my mom is being a pest and you don't have to worry about her. Mm. Uh, she. What a weird conversation, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, as you get ready to head out to work for the day, you see Esther looks over uh, and says, um, looking over and, and just sort of feeling herself, you know, she's kind of talks her work out loud to you a lot and says, it's just, it's just so cool because like we have all these applicants and just Sophia has been working so hard and we've been able to devo devote so much more time to looking for applicants. And there's so many cool people. Like, look at this guy. I think this guy we have to induct into the society. We're gonna have to figure out some way to like open up a secret magic alley and have him stumble down it and discover that magic is real. This is the fun part of the job, 100%. Mm -hmm. It sounds uh, really cool. I can, it's really, I can picture what you're talking about. Oh, it's great. It's getting to show up and tell people magic is real. You might be a wizard. Extremely, extremely fun. Um, oh, look at this. Um, she says, I think this guy's it for sure. This is a guy who's working at Columbia University on th this physics work is phenomenal. And that's the thing. Um, she starts sort of going off uh, about it and then says, am I keeping you? Do you have to, you have to run off to work? Um, yeah, I probably should get going. Do I know any of these people Were you, that she's like looking at? Or um, uh, you go ahead and look at it. Um, uh, it seems like there's a couple of, of different people here uh, that all, Esther has kind of like uh, branched out and is looking for people that are not just like people who are interested in the occult, but people that are like in the humanities, in STEM, people that mm -hmm. are doing like incredibly advanced mathematics and physics and stuff. She goes like, She's like, she's like, I don't know why I feel this way. I just feel like there's a way to involve more people here um, in the order to get a variety of perspectives. I feel like a lot of times the more fusty and old school a person has their approach, like we're never going to be as good at the old hermetic magic stuff as those old timers were. But you can bring a fresh perspective from another discipline and really reorient what we understand about the umbral engine, the umbral arcana. Did you know I just learned after inheriting the headmaster stuff, and you see a moment of sadness pass over her face any time she kind of talks about inheriting the headmaster. It's been three years since Alejandro died, but still, you know, that was like her mentor. Um, she says, Alejandro was so smart and there was so much stuff. Like, I didn't know the umbral arcana is not a spell effect. The umbral arcana is a naturally occurring substance and the umbral engine is just like controlling it. The magic is about 
harnessing a thing that already exists naturally in the sixth borough. Like, I didn't even know that until I got access to this stuff. There's so much exciting work ahead of us. Um, wow. Huh. Well, Sounds like a, like a dam. Kind of, yeah, it kind of is like that. It's, yeah, about, exactly, it's I read using... an article about a dam three weeks ago, and it <laughs> sounded similar to that. Uh, you see, she gets up, she like sees you, like comes out of her like hyper work state and comes over and says, says that's awesome, it's exactly like a dam. Um, awesome. <laughs> well, uh, uh, it sounds like uh, really exciting work, and yeah, what you're talking about, like, it's always great to get like a fresh perspective. Like when I'm doing, I don't know, CrossFit, and then when I'm gonna mix it up and I and I do um, uh, like a dodgeball league or something, that's fun, and that's like a like I'm learning a different way to exercise, and that's and exactly it, sweetie. It's a different valid. way. It's a different way to exercise. That's exactly right. Um, she just smiles and wraps her arms around you, gives you a kiss, and says, "Have a great day at work. I know you're gonna do amazing things. You're, oh, my goodness." I Mr. <laughs> Mr. March. Oh, um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like uh, my days of being on a calendar are long gone. Uh, you see that she waggles her eyebrows at you and says, we could always do like a private photo shoot. Do like a, just a calendar, just a just every month is March calendar if you want. Every month is March? All right, so <laughs> you have a great day at work. <laughs> I end uh, my, my horrible drawing and I get out. <laughs> <laughs> You head out to the street. Um, Ricky, you you head off to the street. Um, you're walking ox along. You're headed to uh, the place where you've been working for the past like two and a half years or so, the Helping Hands Homeless Center and Outreach Program. Um, and uh, you uh, are walking through Clinton Hill. Um, how's Ricky feeling as he, as he heads to work? I think Ricky's feeling good, you know? It's like a good morning. He got up, uh, had his routine uh, feel, everything felt like a normal good day so far. And, um, you know, uh, I think he's just ready to get after it. Hell yeah. Um, you run by, um, give me a perception check real quick. Do I still have advantage? From uh, yes, you do. Um, I rolled. Uh, 22. Hell yeah. Um, you're heading off to the, to the, uh, homeless outreach center where you work and, uh, you see, uh, off in the distance, just sort of on sort of side street, sort of rolling around a corner. You just look and see, uh, a old, your old company's fire truck kind of round the corner and head off down the street for the moment. Um, oh. <laughs> well, I mean, I should say, hey, and uh, I sprint after it as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Summoning that superhuman s s speed, you whip around the corner and go along, um, and you see the three Johns are in the back of the fire truck. John cubed. Um, <laughs> you see, they turn around and they go, <gasps> Ricky! And all of them in their full gear leap off the truck, pick you up in a big hug. And they're like, dude, how is it going these days, man? Look at you. Dude, you look swole as hell. So you're taking care of yourself. I am taking care of myself because that's how you take care of others. You take care of yourself first. You take care uh, of yourself first. You see all yeah. of them at the same time go, you put your own oxygen mask on before you, you put, put it, it on. The piece. Another, the I mean, that's just being safe. That's, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm doing good. I, uh, you know, I'm just, um, we, we moved, uh, me and Esther moved in together and, you know, uh, I'm nice. working at the um, Helping Hands Homeless Outreach Place. And uh, yeah, shit's great. <laughs> dude, that is awesome, dude. It's so great that you found someone that takes care of you, that you can take care of, that kind of intimacy. That's what life's all about, dude. And the number one thing you can do when you get is you can give, man. And that's you to a T, dude. Aw, that's you, John. <laughs> <laughs> I pick uh, him up. Yeah, he goes, yeah, getting picked up. Um, each of you, uh, each of you guys take about a minute and a half to each pick up each of each other, including the three guys who are gonna go back into the same fire truck together. Um, so what are you up to? What are you guys up to? Ah, dude, there's a fire. We gotta get going, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I put them back onto the fire truck. You lift them up one by one. Rock and roll, dude. Yeah. Huge core strength, man, way to go. Take care, Rick. And you see, 
the truck takes off. I think a part uh, of Ricky misses it a little bit, but also, uh, you know, is happy doing what he's doing. Yeah, you get you get to helping hands. You um, have a great day uh, working at the center. There's like a food drive going on right now. You're helping unload boxes for that and get things stored and separated. And uh, yeah, just a, that little wistful pang of seeing the fire truck drive off into the distance. We whisk away from the firehouse to uh, our next character. We are up in uncommon knowledge. Uh, we actually dive all the way up back to Harlem to a tiny little bookstore, an awesome secondhand bookstore, uh, all used books, a lot of old, awesome things like that. There's a small little wooden sign outside that says Uncommon Knowledge, um, sort of tucked off the corner a few blocks away from 125th Street. Um, this beautiful, magical, rich smelling of old, dusty paper. Um, and even as old and crowded as the bookstore is, uh, you see that there is uh, a little shelf outside where people can just take books. There's books that the store has basically said like, hey, like just take, take one. There's also a little wheelchair ramp leading up into this sort of old building. And we go inside to see the man behind the register at the front of the store. Allie, could you please describe your character for us? <laughs> yes, hello everyone. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Pete is just at work. Um, kind of, he's been trying to sit up straight, you know, lately he realized his posture is kind of, you know, lacking and I think he's just kind of like really focusing on that. Kind of having like an anxious day. Just kind of like clothes are fitting weird and just like, you know, ah, maybe it's a posture thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So he's just kind of like at the <laughs> at the register, like <laughs> <laughs> looking around. Posture's kind of weird. Um, you see that your uh, one of your coworkers comes in to replace you. Um, uh, you see, they come in, uh, their name is uh, Z Silverman. This is actually one of the few like close work buds you have. Um, you see, they come in, they got big glasses, a kind of little flop of, of like fluorescent orange, pink and yellow hair. They have their little uh, pronoun pin on the like lapel of their jacket saying they, them on it. Um, and you see that they are also a uh, wheelchair user. Uh, so come in across the ramp, give you a little peace sign and go, Hey, Pete, how's the morning shift going? Hey, Z, it was great. We actually had like one of those like school tours. So, you know, the place was full of kids and I just kind of had to clean up a bunch of juice. <laughs> Sorry, is there like, are, are there like juice stains around? <laughs> nah, I got, I got most of them up. But you know, like the, the place fills with kids. It's like, you know, let's really inspire a love of, of reading in these kids, but they always spill juice multiple places. Um, okay, I feel like that's actually, a, okay, that might be a bigger deal if the books all have juice on. <laughs> How many kids had juice? Was this, you said it was a high school group? No, 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 they were little kids. Oh, little was, kids, You know, it was okay. like third grade or something. There were probably like 30, 35 of them. And I would say like at least 15 of them had an open juice. <laughs> um, you see that Z goes, okay, um, I'm gonna, well, okay, I'm gonna run to the bathroom and kind of just like cool. like eat my lunch super quick and then I'll come uh, yeah, sort of tap no you Yeah, no worries, out. I, yeah, yeah, no worries, uh, no rush. I got all the juice up, I don't know if I made that clear. I'm not leaving you with a big mess. You gotcha, I mean? <laughs> no worries, that's totally, totally fine. Cool, I'm gonna go uh, scarf my lunch down real quick, I'm gonna run to the bathroom. Um, you see that they, uh, uh, being head back, because they say, they say, you need to be out, out of here at like, uh, uh, pretty sharp because you're. You said you're looking at an apartment later today. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I am. I, I would love to, you know, get to that on time. It Hell seems yeah. like when you show up late, they're always like upset. <laughs> No, it's like it's like hell finding a place in the city yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. You see that they uh, head back to uh, the bathroom in the back of the store, uh, and you hear the door kind of jingle again. Uh, you see that a, one of the school chaperones comes back in um, with one of the young sort of like third or fourth grade kids, and there the chaperone goes like, 
All right, sweetie, where where do where do we think we lost it? It's got to be somewhere here, right? We we got to find it so that we can grab the. Oh, would you guys leave? I can help you find it. Um, you see, the kid looks up at you, uh, and they are looking at you with like wide, wide eyes. You see, they've got like a little school uniform with a skirt on, like beads in their hair. Uh, and you see the kid looking up at you in like wide-eyed amazement. Go ahead and give me an insight check with advantage. Ooh. Oh yeah, honey, that's an 18. Pete, Pete is looking down at this kid who very clearly is in like a school uniform skirt, like beads in their hair. You're getting two different vibes from this kid at the same time. You're getting number one kid looking at a queer adult and with a look of like recognition and wonderment. And you're also getting maybe something else beyond that as well. Um, the kid looks hmm. around and is like, um, yeah, I, I, I was looking around at the different uh, books and stuff and found a bunch of, uh, it, it, so it's like a little teddy bear backpack. And you see that they look up at you and say, uh, it's a little brown teddy bear, but it's got backpack straps built into it. It's my little teddy bear backpack. Oh, that's really cool. That's, oh, I love stuff like that. Um, okay, man, yeah, let's look around. Uh, and I just kind of like help look around. And then I say to the chaperone, like, do you, uh, like, do you know where they left it? Do you know which areas they were in? Um, the chaperone shrugs, um, and you see the kid points over at a stack of books and says, maybe it might've been like behind there. Uh, the chaperone goes to start looking and the kid just turns to look up at you. Um, and they're again, like about nine years old. Um, and you see, they just sort of wave at you uh, and go, hi, what's your name? Um, it's Pete. Oh, that's so hard to do. <laughs> Sorry, it's Pete. My real name is Pete. I'll tell you my real name and it's Pete. <laughs> um, the kid sort of nods and looks up uh, and says, cool, cool. The What's ladies, your name? Uh, the little kid says, uh, Amanda. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, and I think Pete on that 18 Insight can tell that this little nine-year-old is having those early, early feelings of like, maybe I don't want this to be my name forever. Cool. Do mm -hmm. you like that name? Cool. Well, do you have any nicknames that you go by or? Um, well, there's a lot of other Amandas in the school and uh, my last name is uh, 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 Daniels. And um, so I, sometimes I get called Amanda D and sometimes I get called D for short. And I kind of like the nickname D. Yeah, that's a cool, yeah, that's a cool nickname. We have someone who works here, their name's Z. You see uh, that Amanda's eyes light up um, uh, as they look at you. Um, and they quickly look over your shoulder as a little flicker of a green light in the shape of a butterfly just moves around. And that one was not one that you even made visible to like other people. It just moves around for a second, but you see that Amanda sees it. Huh. You know, you can, you can start to make your own reality. You know, you can tell people how you'd like to be perceived and it's never too early to start that. You should tell everyone that your name's D. Uh, D looks up at you with uh, just tears like forming and just smiles. Chaperone lifts Teddy Bear up out of the thing and says, is this it? Okay, uh, okay, let's, let's get out of here and um, uh, D smiles at you and just again is looking at you with like that rapt fascination of like, what a cool person. And like, I'm nine and I'm like 
I'm not, I don't I, get it. Yeah, like. I think I have the the butterfly fly around and then I make a circle with my hands and the butterfly flies through it. <laughs> I'm like, bye, D. <laughs> like, vape um, tricks with it. D, D waves so <laughs> excitedly, goes, bye, Pete. And like, blows kisses and waves and smiles. Uh, uh, and walks off um, uh, back into the street. Um, uh, Best part of the job. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, yes, the Vox Phantasma of New York City uh, bringing a little bit of the dream world into the waking. Um, <laughs> Z, uh, Z comes out, replaces you, cuts you loose. You got this apartment to go head out and see. Um, yeah. You know, you check your phone for the info, and as you're like sort of heading to the subway, I think Pete recognizes that like you hadn't checked your phone for a good like 40 minutes, and there are no texts waiting on it when you look up, and it's just a very different life. And I only have one phone now. What a, like a total <laughs> normie. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> You begin to head off towards the subway, looking at that phone. Uh, probably the most recent texts are like from Dr. Lugosh. Uh, and actually, yeah, the, the most recent text this morning was from Dr. Lugosh, um, uh, checking in uh, about coming to tomorrow's meeting and just making oh, sure that- Oh, yeah. They're... I shoot him I shoot him a text back. Oh, sorry, was that work? Yeah, I'll definitely be there. Awesome. Um, uh, great. You head off into the city. Um, uh, I think I'm eating just like the worst food ever before meeting someone good. I have like a four pack of like White Castle sliders that I'm like, wow. <laughs> um, eating them cold? Not a eating cold, cold sliders. Eating them cold. so cold. No. no. I got them on the way to work. I'm <laughs> so they're defrosted. You just didn't have time. Yeah. Um, oh. um, Incredible. Um, from there, we move and zoom up away from Harlem all the way back down. Moving, 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 all the way to Staten Island. <laughs> um, uh, uh, all the way to Staten Island um, to a small, uh, I honestly think one one bedroom apartment. Um, okay, shared... one bedroom. We upgraded from studio. <laughs> <laughs> upgraded from studio. A one bedroom above Spaghetti's Bakery. Um, you can smell the, the smell of the cannolis wafts in through the windows. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming back from a morning shift at first class luxury uh, beauty hair salon, um, uh, Sophia, uh, Sophia Lee, uh, you walk through the door of your apartment after uh, you had about like three back-to-back -back appointments today. They all the wanted the Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> it's back, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, you walk in um, and see that um, the that the living all the living spaces are completely occupied by yet another deep clean of the entire apartment. The curtains have been laundered. There's piles of like laundry being folded everywhere. Um, uh, your mom uh, walks in, who you are now living with. Uh, Marie Bicicletta walks in and goes. Okay, I couldn't tell, because uh, you, you're separating your whites from the colors, but you're also separating things that need that are delicate from everything else. So um, I'm, I went through and re-separated and re-washed. If anything's not in the right place, you let me know. Mom, I don't care. Throw it all in one load. It's clothes, who cares? I'm not gonna put you delicate, and I'm not gonna put lace or anything like that. First of Mother, all, this is- what need do I have for delicates in my life? Do you think anyone sees my delicates besides you? Maybe you wanna find someone who wants to see your delicates. Maybe my delicates are just private for a little while, okay? Yeah, private doesn't mean nobody, sweetheart. <laughs> I don't get destroyed by the dryer. I don't care. No one's looking at my delicates. End of sentence. 
Um, you see, she she looks out and says, says, I don't understand why you yell at me. I'm trying to help you. God forbid your own mother. I I'm in here. You think I like to go through and look at my daughter's lingerie? You should be able to do this for yourself. I but know, you got I these, know. who has a hair appointment at 1.30 in the morning? Why do you have huh? hair appointments at such strange times of night? I told you I have some very uh, particular clients and uh, I'm on call. I'm an on-call hairdresser. This is absolutely normal. You didn't um, know that the salon has a graveyard shift? It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, She's nothing just... to see. I cut hair, that's all I do, mom. That's all I but, do. But why are they making you pull so many doubles? You go work in the morning, you work a graveyard shift at night. Sweetheart, where is the time in your life to meet a man? Nobody is cut. There are not men at the hair salon, sweetheart. Mom, I, abs I absolutely appreciate what you're doing, but uh, you, you got to understand that right now, work keeps me out of the bottle. And so maybe it's not such a bad thing. Okay, all right, forgive me. She knows, she knows the card up the sleeve to make mom agree, so yeah. there you go. There you go, play the card that makes mom have to yeah. shut up. Um, yeah. <laughs> and just so you know, if you try to sign me up for Tinder one more time, I mean, you shouldn't do it because what did, what did you do? You uploaded my high school senior photo and then the, <laughs> the bio was a Bible quote? Mother. You look beautiful. I, I don't, why should we? It was we... nothing but predators. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give it to you very straight. It she was looks just up... not a strategic. It was not strategic. She <laughs> holds up. She holds up a an iPhone that she has had made so that the font is like enormously large on it. I and can read one word on that. <laughs> she says, "Yes, you. And you. There only needs to be one word, which is match." And you've gotten 18. I run your account better than you do. Look at this conversation. This guy is a sergeant in the fire department. And look at this. As he, he texted me saying, hey, what's up? I love the corsage in your main photo. And I and look what I said. I said, me, I, said. I said, me, parentheses, Sophia, am single and available. Okay, I, I love... take it back. You just seem like you're catfishing. You just seem like you're catfishing. What's catfishing? People keep saying I'm doing that. Does that mean you're doing well? No, it means that people think that you're pretending to be one person and you're not. And honestly, that isn't what's happening here. <laughs> You're catfishing for a good cause, but nevertheless, the cat has been fished. Um, you see, you see, she goes, okay, well, I guess I can't win. There's a lot of lovely men on here. I the know. ones that, th there are some that I, I, I find distasteful, but you got to throw a lot of lines before you land a fish, sweetheart. And that's okay, all I'm- Okay, mother, I'm, I'm just going to say one thing. I'm not the only single woman in this one bedroom apartment. So. First of it, all, is it possible that you are focusing on me because you don't want to look at what's going on with you? First of all, mm -hmm. I am not single. I am still married to that scum of the year. I don't even want to say his name. All right. I don't want you to say it either. Women in my generation, we don't get divorced. Okay. And if I ever see the man I'm married to again, whose name I won't say, I'll kill him. And I want you to know that he's dead to me, but I am not single, okay? There, I have beautiful children, my beautiful daughter. And she comes over and grabs her, her face and, <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. I know I can be a nudge, I just want you to be happy, okay? I know, I know, mom, I know. All right, I'm gonna finish the laundry. Uh, I'm gonna go get some sandwiches downstairs and we'll get you something to eat because I know you gotta head out again in not too long. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of uh, hair needs to be cut in this city. <laughs> a lot um, of Rachels. I got to turn a lot of zeros into Rachels. 
Um, you see uh, your mom heads out. Uh, uh, also, introducing a, a new little game system here for those watching at home. Uh, oh, I'm go right. Yeah, so this is a, f so, so uh, for everyone at home, uh, uh, Dimension 20 uh, for this season of The Unsleeping City because Sophia and Pete uh, are both sober at the moment. Uh, we actually consulted with some awesome uh, sobriety and addiction consultants to create kind of an extension of the, the Adine Abernant panic attack system um, uh, into a system to accurately ref reflect our characters uh, as they uh, uh, work on their sobriety. So uh, both uh, Allie and Emily have a list of uh, sort of sobriety triggers for uh, Sophia and Pete. Um, uh, fighting with your mom is fighting one of Sophia's. Uh, so you go ahead, you're at a D20 right now because you've been doing yeah. meetings and you're doing I've, very well. I've been sober two years, uh, three months, and 17 days. Um, not three years because after Cug passed, I went on a nine month bender, but. Um, <laughs> nine months. Oh. I, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Okay, I passed, I got a five. Hell yeah, great. Um, uh, uh, awesome. It's okay, Sophia, still your mind. She wants the best for you. You just, you know, let the shame of starting a fight with someone who wants the best for you just fall off of you like water in the shower. You center yourself, you're feeling good. Um, um, uh, Sophia and Pete, you guys feel free to make those roles even when I'm not calling for them as well. Um, so, very cool. Um, uh, Sophia, you look at your phone. I think Sophia's probably the most on the ball in terms of tomorrow being Halloween. Um, oh yeah, I've got, I've got pumpkin earrings. I'm wearing leopard print <laughs> pants. I know you're talking about magical, but I am saying Sophia is also decked out for Halloween. Pumpkin earrings, big pumpkin shirt, uh, a pumpkin full of Halloween candy that she brings to every place she works. <laughs> Incredible. And um, also she's aware that magic will be uh, at a, in a potent stage tomorrow. Um, hell yes. Um, you also, so uh, before you sort of have your business tonight, you see a little reminder of an appointment that you actually have in the city on the Upper West Side. Um, uh, you got a spot with your psychic today as well. Ah, uh, yes, okay. <laughs> well, um, yeah, you know what, this will be good because I just had a fight with my mother. I'm like feeling just kind of icky from that. So I will just, um, I don't want to take the Staten Island Ferry. So do I have a car at all? Uh, go ahead and make a, <laughs> uh, make a flat wisdom check for me. <laughs> okay. I got a 19 plus, hold on. <laughs> 19 plus three, 22. Um, this is probably just gonna tell me I absolutely don't. <laughs> um, you absolutely uh, have access to a car. Um, your brother, Mario, stole a car, which you stole so he can't report it. Um, okay. So... Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Great, I get in the car. I uh, I plug my iPhone in. I start blasting uh, <laughs> music and I uh, hop on the Verrazano Bridge to take a really indirect route. To the yeah, go on the Verrazano <laughs> up the BQE over the Triborough down to the, the I Upper love West traffic. Side. It's something to do when you're sober. <laughs> 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 um, a while later, um, as you're driving, you see that in the in the radio. Um, so, so uh, what, what kind of music do you have playing in the radio right now? Um, I think I just whatever whatever station was on. Um, uh, awesome. You see that the, the station sort of <laughs> um, and settles on a super fun merengue station as you, uh, uh, as it starts playing. And as that happens, appearing next to you is your patron in the passenger seat made of light, purring. Um, yeah, you look beautiful today. Are Good idea. You see, uh, La Gran Gata smiles at you, the great bodega cat of New York, and says, 
Are we perhaps going hunting later tonight? Or perhaps tomorrow? I know there are many that will steal the visage of the sexy cat. I mean, we've gone hunting every single night since I've been sober. So yeah, we'll be hunting, yeah. What this are you is... in the mood to hunt for? You see, uh, Legrand got to says, it is all good to me if we're ever wrongdoers, wicked and licentious folks wander the street threatening the innocent people of this city. If we could also find some mice or something. I know that you don't ever no want rats. me to... F no we don't rats. Do rats. We don't we do rats. We respect the rats. We respect the rats. Okay. But maybe a full pigeon one time, you know? <laughs> hmm, I'm kind of torn because I knew a pigeon that once loved a rat. <laughs> but I'll let you have the pigeons. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> um, uh, and Legrand got to sort of twinkles out in light. Um, and you arrive on uh, West 72nd Street, not too, look, look uh, around Columbus, like not too far away from Central Park, um, tucked away, not on one of the main avenues, but there's like a series of like metal stairs going down to a shop front that is like partially subterranean, you see um, a neon sign flickering psychic. And it's a weird neon sign because it's flickering, but you can only see this storefront if you like look down the stairwell outside of the building. Um, you see a kind of crystal ball in the window, psychic, cards red. You see the name on the front that says sort of this like, uh, that's like partially in there's like Cyrillic letters, a sort of Russian font uh, that says uh, Madame, uh, Madame Anastasia uh, on the front of it. Um, and I've and, been here before, right? Because I'm yes, kind of the, using, I'm leaning on this psychic instead of uh, being an adult and going to a therapist. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Also, you know this psychic because this is a psychic who got recommended to you because you can actually talk about your unsleeping city stuff here. This psychic is is uh, partially connected to or inducted into the unsleeping city, um, uh, and you are familiar. In other words, you can be your full self here. Okay. Um, I go in, Madame Anastasia. On Madame Anastasia. Uh, a woman emerges from the back. Siobhan, could you please describe your character for us? Oh. Mm. Uh, yes, I'm uh, Anastasia, Madame Anastasia. Uh, I uh, am uh, one of the, the, the uh, uh, great psychics of New York City. All of those other psychics I've got to say are frauds, but me, I am the real thing. Uh, I read cards for my ladies, the Upper West Side, the Upper East Side, the Lower West Side, the Lower East Side, uh, all kinds of people all over the city. They come to me for my readings because they're so accurate <laughs> and real. Uh, I'm uh, 45 years young. Uh, I've got a, a beautiful curly hair that I have wrapped in a scarf because people have a certain expectation of what they're their psychics are looking like. Uh, and um, I do have a pair of, of Tevas on also because you can't really <laughs> see the Tevas underneath the, the, the beautiful uh, tablecloth that I have to do my readings on. <laughs> Secret Tevas? <laughs> I've seen, I, can, I do a, can I do a perception to try to see the Tevas? <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. Shit, sorry. And Siobhan, give me a stealth check. <laughs> like, gotta hide those teeth. I got a 10 <laughs> stealth. Oh no. I oh, got no, there's a Tiva poking out. <laughs> I quickly pull my Tivas under me. <laughs> I make a note Tivas. to get her a nice pair of shoes. You gotta be comfortable, you know? It's important <laughs> to be comfortable. You gotta walk around the city a lot, you know what I mean? <sighs> Madam Anastasia, um, mm. I, I, I got into a big fight with my mother. It's the same oh, song and dance. She yes. wants me to start dating again. I don't really know how to be someone who is not living in the memory of Dale. And I guess I thought maybe we could just do some tarot cards. Yes, 
of course. Seems you want like the that would be the adult solution. What is your question that you would like to ask to the cards? I want you okay. to close your eyes uh -huh. and concentrate very hard on this okay. question. Okay. I love this. <laughs> My question will be, is it okay to fall in love again? Mmm, a beautiful question. Very good. Okay. Thank you so now, much. Your support means everything. Uh, uh, I'm going to cut the deck when you tell me to cut the deck, okay? Okay. okay. Cut the deck! Just, Did I surprise okay. you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let us see what the cards they have installed for you, Sophia. Okay. Mmm, your past. The Ace of Wands. Yeah. One man, <gasps> strong. Yeah, virile. He was, he was strong. He was virile. He was. We had a really quiet, beautiful relationship, but also a, a nasty sex life. Oh, that sounds, <laughs> honestly. So I think you're right. You're right. That card is absolutely, absolutely. right. <laughs> the present. What are we saying? Oh. Oh my goodness. Uh huh. Oh dear. A card of. Ill omen, the tower, I think, my dear, you're not ready to date yet. It's a, oh. it's a card of change, of fall. Your, your life is, oh. is in a, a time of flux. Okay. You, it, you things are moving it. around. You don't have yeah. time to date. You're falling out of a tower. I don't have I'm, fa I'm, falling, I'm falling out of a tower. <laughs> you're falling out of a tower. Falling. But it's okay because we're okay, going to how rebuild do I stop this falling? tower. What do together. I grab onto, Anastasia? What do I grab onto? No, you grab onto yourself because you are the what? strong one, you see? Ah, ah, there was a time in my life when I was supposed to choose myself and it took me a long time. I understand. You, you know, when you're a woman in this life, sometimes it takes a long time to be like, oh, I got to choose myself sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's wow. okay. But okay. you got to choose yourself. Okay. And let's see what is this future holding for you. Oh, well, this is a very handsome looking man. We don't see his face yet. We're not sure who oh. he is. The three of wands. But wow. Three it looks wands, like he's huh? going on a journey. <laughs> three of ones. <laughs> hey, maybe it is. Maybe you got three ones coming to you. Maybe this oh is my. what's happening in your future. Is it is oh is my. three men? Do you think oh you can handle three men at a time? <laughs> I don't know. My palms are sweating. I feel guilty <laughs> about even handling one man. Oh, Anastasia, you always give me so much to think about. Oh. I, th I think having things to think about is very important for you. You know, it, I think it's okay for you to not date for a little bit. That's okay. But also, we're looking for these three men. We're looking for these dark, handsome three men who are coming into your life. Keep oh your mind open. Keep your heart open. Okay. My heart, my heart is open. And keep two, though, <laughs> other things open the as well. Three you men. need to keep them open. <laughs> my heart is open to three men. My heart is open uh to three men. <laughs> <laughs> the bell of the door rings and a man walks into the psychic shop. Um, uh, he is wearing a uh, sort of blue windbreaker, sweatpants and socks and sandals. Um, he's got a sort of gold chain chest hair poking out of the sort of top of the windbreaker, um, chin strap beard. Um, you recognize this as Yagdash Skrovich. Um, uh, you see, he it's comes... Yagdash! It's Yagdash! It's, it's Yagdash! Yagdash. Um, you see Yagdash comes in, uh, looks over um, at Madame Anastasia and goes, uh, Hello, Ms. Lizowski, I have a bag of illegal drug money. Mm, I say in Polish, Jagdash, what are you doing? I'm, I'm clearly in a reading. You're saying illegal money. What, what are you doing? No, but you are, you are cash business. So we do the mm, money laundering here. No, no, here. Yagdash, you know when this sign is popping, you don't come hopping. You know what I mean? It's, I'm, I'm doing a reading. This is basic, basic crime stuff here, Yagdash. <laughs> oh, wait, you do, for, you do the card reading for real because. The, because like we own the pizza place, but it's not, we don't yeah, really Dash, make- if I don't do the reading for real, the cops, they know that it's a fake business. Oh, and the cops arrest you for crimes. No, they arrest you for crimes. What? You know this? 
You read this in the cards? If, if you keep on... Yes, I read it in the cards, Yagdar. If you don't... Yagdar pulls a gun out of this... About this. <laughs> he pulls no, a gun out of his bag of money... the cards say you oh. gotta just be smarter. Uh, he runs into the bathroom, locks the door, and you hear him go, nobody let the cops inside! You hear, bam! And then you hear, Kay! um Yagdar, and- my roof, I, this is a rented office space, Yagdash. If I don't get my deposit back, this is on you. Why, did, why are you shooting guns inside? The, I, for I the cops! Say, I am so sorry. This, the this bullets is, bounce off the not... pipe and hit me in the ass! <laughs> no, what this boy is doing. Is, is this I a former so lover I of yours? I will do another card for you, so That was all just... in it. Polish. I don't know what you guys said. It was that. Former lover. <laughs> Let's do another card Over for lover, you, just lover. just to see what about this future lover, you know. So let's oh. close your eyes. Okay. And I'll concentrate. Maybe your ears okay. as well. Concentrate okay. very hard. I put some I, AirPods I, in. I open the door to the bathroom and kick <laughs> Yagdash out. He limps mm. out with a just a ass covered in blood, and he goes, "Okay, I still live the." I leave the drug money still for yes, you. Yes, leave the drug money. Go to the hospital, you idiot. What are you That's doing? That's where the cops will be looking for me go, first thing. No, go, go to Lotto, Dr. Lugash. What are you doing? I go You've to Dr. Lugash. You see? I, I got to talk to your aunt. He, he, takes, he takes a burner out and calls it. He goes, Dr. Lugash, I did a Not crime in, in the bathroom. Here. Leave the leave. Oh, OK, you see, he walks out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Yagdash leaves. So. Uh, Sophia, you conclude your reading there that afternoon uh, with Madame Anastasia. And Madame Anastasia, or as her real name is actually, Iga Lizowski. Uh, Iga, you know that your daughter's having a sleepover with some school friends tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was your last appointment of the day. Um, uh, but your your daughter is like hosting a big friend sleepover for the first time. It's like a big middle school deal tonight. Um, you see a text on your phone asking if you can get snacks from the store. And then under that, there's sort of an ellipses and then an ellipses again, an ellipses again, like she's like she's thinking of saying something and not saying it. What, what are these dots? What do these dots mean? I'm, I take it back. <laughs> she says, um, they mean I'm typing something, mom, but c- can I ask you, can I ask you a favor about tonight? Yes. She says, it would be great if we could just get regular snacks from the store, like Oreos and chips and stuff like that and not make a bunch of Polish snacks oh, for my so, friends. So the Polish snacks are, you're too good for Polish snacks now? Mm, you see, you she like te- my little borscht bites? You don't she like texts them? back and she says, I just want my friends to have a normal time, to have Goat's a normal- cheese is a normal cheese. Sheep <laughs> cheese is a normal cheese, but just because you're friends, they only eat this American cheese, which is bad. You see, she texts back and, and says, uh, just uh, one word text in like a, a stack. They just say, please just be normal tonight. Uh, okay, okay, I'll get you, I'll get you the Oreos. I'll get you the trash food, the, the trash sugar food. Uh, she texts back, thank you, mom. I, and then there's another ellipsis for a second. And then she says, also, can we have borscht bites tomorrow? I love borscht bites. <laughs> um, yes, we can have borscht bites tomorrow. You head off to go back to Greenpoint. Um, we are going to cut now over to Queens, New York, baby. Um, massive signs hang, caution tape all around the resplendent Queens Center Mall. Um, one of the only true malls in New York. Manhattan, of course, has so many shopping districts that a real mall could never really live in Manhattan. But out here in Queens, the space and the population density were just perfect for the mall to end all malls that has been shuttered and slated for demolition. All around, we see signs as part of a huge public relations blitz for the new, largest in the world, state-of-the-art 
um, Gladiator Shipping and Fulfillment Campus. Gladiator is, is one of the largest internet companies in the world. It is streaming services, it is shipment, it's online shopping, it is education, it's, it's all kinds of stuff. It's an enormous company. And there's all these signs of like happy enterprising professionals and smiling people talking about the new Gladiator campus of shipping and fulfillment centers. There will be Gladiator dorms for people to like live in the company structure as part of the structure here. There's like a whole uh, food court for the employees that are gonna be living here. Um, and there's even a sign outside saying like, get ready for your neighborhood to have the brand new Gladiator Shipping and Fulfillment Center. Say hi, neighbor. And there's someone holding a little payment card um, that's basically like, a credit card that you can get, like it's part of a rewards program to have people that can fully move off of cash and just be using like gladiator currency. Um, so you see all of this and then it's daytime. There's construction workers all around. This is like a long way away from being built, but the demolition is getting set up actively. Men with hard hats are walking around, construction workers, probably across the street from this, hiding in the shadow of an awning. We see... <laughs> Murph, who do we see? <laughs> um, we see Cody, who is a... Um, He's a mall goth without a mall. Um, he has uh, a like Skrillex kind of haircut with like long black hair on the one side and then shaved on the other side. And then he's got a blue streak going through his black hair. Um, very pale, he's got some like eyeshadow on. Um, so much leather, uh, a duster, uh, like a long black duster. Um, and then I think he hates Halloween because people always think he's dressed up and compliment his costume. Um, and he has, uh, like, he's a real sword guy. He's got, like, a big um, replica Buster sword from Final Fantasy VII on his back and a bunch of other swords around him and, like, kunai and things like that and ninja throwing uh, stars. Um, oh, and man. always has a cigarette in his mouth. Um, and is just eternally pissed off and was pissed off before the mall got closed down and is even more pissed now. Um, and he's just waiting for the construction workers to turn around uh, so that he can chuck a ninja star at um, some of the gladiator signs. Cause I fucking <laughs> hate gladiator. Um, uh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tiniest cigarettes, it's like smushed. Like, nib. He picks out butts off the ground and he relights them. <laughs> um, Times are lean without the mall. <laughs> um, you see um, a group of the construction workers kind of turn their back to you for a moment and start moving away. You see one of the sort of old foreman, it's kind of like squat Irish looking guy, like white hair kind of forming out a clipboard. It's going like, yeah, so we're gonna take this down because we gotta get the, so the landscapers are gonna come through here. They're coming in from 68th down to 63rd. So this is all gonna be campus, but but we gotta get that leveled out because we, the, the, we gotta get the back hallway in here to uproot this tree over here. Uh, and they sort of move a little ways away, giving you an opportunity to huck a ninja star. I huck a ninja star <laughs> I try to hit, um, you said there was somebody with like a, like a happy face. I try to hit him like right between the eyes. You mean a person or a poster? Oh, a poster. Definitely not a, <laughs> okay. definitely not a, I'm not committing Cody's a murder. murderer. Kills a uh, man. Yeah, not just, a yes, he's not. Attacks all these innocent construction workers. No, no. <laughs> Cody's a real defacing property guy. He's he's the guy who you'd like go, like sneak out at night with in high school would just start like kicking a mailbox. You'd be like, dude, stop. <laughs> Cody, you huck a ninja star straight into the poster's face. Um, as you do so, you hear the thunk, um, and you see that the foreman whips around and says, hey, hey, it's that, it's that fucking kid, kid. You get the fuck out of here. You get the fuck out of here, buddy. <laughs> You, I'm not going fucking anywhere, dude. You get out of here. 
Oh, I get out of here? Yeah. Tell me, give me one good reason I shouldn't walk across this fucking street and kick your ass. Where's your sword, bro? Where's my fucking sword? I don't need Where's a fucking your sword? sword. I have 12. I'm going to rip that sword out of your hands and shove it up your ass, kid. Yeah, you can try. And I pull out the buster sword. Um, immediately behind you, you hear whoop, whoop. And you see, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, is it illegal to fucking hit paper with ninja stars? <laughs> is it fucking illegal? Um, you see, yeah, you see the cops come out and say, hey man, we clocked that buster sword from a while away. We're, uh, you can't be, you can't pull it out of people. And you, you see the guy, the foreman across the street goes, yeah, that's right, kid, you're a long way from Transylvania, asshole. Yeah, I'm not from fucking Transylvania. I worked at the fucking Hot Topic that you're fucking destroying. So actually, I belong here and you belong on the internet because gladiators from the fucking internet? You Fuck see another you, dude, where's your sword? You see <laughs> another construction worker goes, hey, where's your, he goes, how come you're out in the daylight, Dracula? What the fuck is going on, man? Uh, I'm actually like Blade, I'm a fucking daywalker, dude. Read a comic. <laughs> Um, you, you get hassled by the cops. Do you think, do you think Cody has, this is by the way, Cody, Night Angel Walsh. Um, <laughs> do we think Cody has a, uh, uh, like a permit for this replica Buster, Buster sword? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, the, the cops fully jack this sword. You said uh, I couldn't have the fucking blade sword. This one's different. You see, they go, Look, man, it's really simple. You, you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have a replica weapon, you either can't have it filed down to an edge like this, or it needs to be double bladed. Single bladed weapon in the state of New York is an illegal weapon. You can't, unless you are transporting it, right? Yeah, I'm transporting it to that dude's fucking head. And okay, so that's to the so, construction worker. So that that absolutely is uh is uh, assault. That's a verbal that's verbal assault. That's a that's a this threat. This is real assault. They're taking cars and shit and driving it like construction vehicles and driving it around my fucking job, man. Okay. I'm just trying to do my job. Okay. <sighs> you're okay, this uh, sir, I don't need to know a thing so about So I'm allowed to have nunchucks is what you're saying. Again, if you are transporting them to a martial arts studio where you are licensed and, and have the insurance for that, yes. Okay, so absolutely. if I sign up for a fucking Taekwondo class, I can just freak out with these weapons. Is that what you're telling me? You can never freak out with these weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would freak out, I'm fucking very controlled. <laughs> the cops, uh, you see that the, the guy leans in and says, look man, I'm gonna let you off with a warning because frankly, I don't find you threatening. So. <laughs> <laughs> so <It's> fucking weird. <laughs> Do you not find the devil threatening? <laughs> um, and they, but they say you got to get out of here, and so they send they send you off packing. Go ahead and give me either investigation or give me perception. Ooh, baby, that is a nineteen. 19, hell yes. Um, you know that there's a way to get into the hot topic, just not with this many people around. There's so much good shit left in there that didn't get moved back out. And you know that they're just gonna raise this place to the ground and junk all of that shit. If anyone touches those Jack Skellington hoodies, I'm gonna fucking <laughs> freak out. <laughs> And I just like kick a Halloween uh, decoration. On the, on you the just kick a full <laughs> pumpkin that like a co <laughs> like a coffee oh. shop had carved for their stoop, um, <laughs> and you head home as Cody marches back, knowing that you'll be able to return tonight to get those things. You know the way in. Um, we zoom back over to the third story apartment of a beautiful family owned building in Harlem, New York. Uh, as Kingston Brown awakes from his beautiful dream of himself as a younger man, because guess what baby, Kingston Brown for about about a year or more now, actually yeah, almost, almost three years uh, has been having lovely dreams at night and remembering them on waking in the morning. Um, uh, Kingston, um, uh, you awake, 
uh, to see uh, the most beautiful woman in the world sitting on the bed with a giant mug of coffee placed next to you on the bedside table uh, as she leans down and gives you a kiss. Um, Liz is in her uh, apartment uniform, which is uh, Liz wears very professional clothes to work. She's a lawyer, she works in city buildings, she works with the city. Uh, so the moment she comes in the door at night, it is one of your oldest, softest, most threadbare t-shirts and one of your oldest, most comfortable boxers. And that is what Liz wears in the apartment. That is the apartment <laughs> uniform. Uh, and you, you've, it, it is a steady war of attrition as your old t-shirts move from your dresser to hers over the course of weeks. You can't be, hey, that's, that's, that's one of my favorite t-shirts, all right? That was the time, you know, uh, my uncle got that for me from the Playboy Jazz Festival. You can't, you can't just hate, you just can't wear, you know, that's- This was at the a, bottom of your shirt drawer. You Tell me, do you actually wear this? Do you actually wear this shirt? Maybe, maybe. I don't I, no, no, I don't wear it, but you know. You see, she leans down, gives you a kiss on the cheek and says, it's comfy, it's nice. Yeah. Okay, well. I promise. You look good in it. You see, she winks at you and says, I know I look good in it. Um, <laughs> Uh, and she walks out. Um, you wake up beautiful morning that you're you're off in your living room. This is a classic old railroad apartment. Um, you got like old vinyl playing in the morning. Liz came back with some of her furniture. You have a little, like one of those small marble top cafe tables of the kind that you'd find in Paris. There's like a little Parisian thing over by the window near the sunlight. Um, Liz is sitting there having her coffee, old school, like reading a new, a, reading a paper, newspaper. Um, and lying down on the couch next to you is the most stately, comfy, sleepy bulldog in the world, Bruce, uh, who's right there next to you. Uh, I go give just Bruce a, like a, you know, a good old belly rub. Oh. Uh, uh, there, there he is, there he is, there he is. Uh, and then like toss a toy across the room for him to go chase. Uh, Bruce loves to p play fetch and he plays it at a glacial speed. The toy goes, he like swivels his head, looks, gets up, shakes himself a little bit, moseys on down the couch to make it to the ottoman, from the ottoman to a little sort of, uh, you know, like a, a, a nice folded blanket, roll, rolls off the blanket, waddles his way over to the toy, grabs the toy, kind of forgets where he came from, remembers, goes back up with the toy to the couch and plops it on the arm of the sofa in front of you. You're perfect, you know that? You're perfect. Uh, and I go, uh, I go join Liz over on the, uh, at our, our Parisian, uh, our Parisian table. Uh, this beautiful little, you can tell it was like one of those like stone and metal tables that was made for like an outdoor alfresco kind of dining, but yeah. you guys have it here. Beautiful little seats. For like 40 minutes of your morning, there's like an old vinyl of just like some of the best jazz in the world playing. You guys drink these huge pots of coffee that are like, you have this old reliable coffee maker. Liz usually puts one or she like mixes it up a little bit. This morning there's like a little dash of cinnamon in there. Um, you see, uh, life it couldn't be more beautiful. It's great. Liz uh, looks up at you and goes, all right, I better start thinking about getting to work. The, um, uh, you know, I'm working on this case and you know who's actually helping me out, who we're, we're pulling some evidence from is, uh, well, it's your friend, Kugrash's son, David, uh, is actually- Oh, yeah. He's doing a lot of help. We're looking after this thing. It's a whole Rico case right now. We're looking, mm -hmm. you know, after uh, Dawn Confetti and the whole thing, you know, like finally it's been years, but we're actually, we have the case ready to kind of dismantle that whole pixie um, organization. The whole situation, yeah. That's well, right. Hey, that's good, you know? I'm, I'm sure Kugrash is out there somewhere watching it all and it's very proud. You see that she puts her hand over her heart and says, oh, thank you, Kagrash, for watching out from us. Um, uh, she looks at you and says, 
<laughs> oh, Murph doing hairy baby. Oh. Um, I feel like oh, I, as a player, have to roll one of my things. Just like <laughs> you see, um, she looks up at you. Um, you got a you got a relaxed morning ahead of you. You're not working until yeah. later today. She looks up and says, "All right, I'm gonna get ready to head to work, hon." Um, she looks and says, uh, "Oh, by the way." Uh, because we're kind of gearing up, uh, I actually have some depositions this Friday, so I'm gonna have to pass on that Islanders game. I know that you got tickets for. Oh, come on! I, I mean, it's I, it's okay. It's completely okay. Uh, I was I was looking forward to it. Is all. I know. We'll go. I promise. I'm. I have to miss the Islanders game so that we can go walking by the river on Sunday. That's okay, sacrosanct. Okay. Nothing's touched. That's what's it. important. That's what's important. She gives you a kiss goodbye. Uh, Kingston's got a, got a spare Islanders ticket for Friday that he's got to figure out what to do with. Uh, you know I'm hitting the phone. Uh, let me uh, let me text Pete real quick. Uh, just uh, what's going down Friday. Uh, if you got the time, I got a spare ticket uh, to go see New York's best team. I write back, oh, the Yankees? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because uh, I'm Kingston, fucking with you. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Kingston gets truly, like, viscerally upset. <laughs> and then uh, I write a, a, a laughing emoji. I, I text back, H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A, send. Uh, cool, so you're down? Uh, yeah. I'm uh, super down. Very cool. Uh, let me know if you want to grab dinner or something beforehand. Uh, Liz is working uh, long shifts this week. Would be great to see you. I say, that sounds great. Let's go to that pupusa spot. Oh, uh, I, I text back, I, I love pupusas. Uh, <laughs> cannot wait for pupusas and, uh, and the Islanders. <laughs> Yeah, I'll say, uh, Pete, you're actually you're uh, uh, you're you're near Kingston right now. It's like near lunchtime. If you wanted to grab pupusas now, if you have a moment before you head out, <gasps> dare I say we go grab some right now? What are you up to now? Uh, uh, hungry for pupusas. <laughs> we <laughs> get there. We asking. get there. Hell uh, yeah. <laughs> headed downstairs. Meet you outside. Meet you at Cosmos. Uh, and uh, I immediately like you know toss on. Uh, my coat over my like you know comfortable sweater, mm -hmm. uh, and bound down the stairs, excited for pupusas. I quickly finish my sliders and trash <laughs> away. Book uh, it. You bound down the stairs. Um, uh, you've also probably got you got to take Bruce for a walk before you head to oh, work perfect. yourself. Um, Kingston, you hit the street. The music of the city comes to life. You walk in <laughs> synchronized heartbeat with those around you. Uh, your friends in the neighborhood all say hello to you as you pass by. The dogs of the neighborhood all nod to Bruce as Bruce passes by. Um, <laughs> you see, um, uh, you get to Cosmos. Cosmo goes, "Hey, Kingston Brown, man." Hey, what's up, Cosmo? Uh, can I get a can I get a tall black one? Just you know, just to kick the day off. I like it, my man. Here you go. Uh, your coffee lands in front of you uh, uh, on the city's tab. Blam. Cosmo says, hey, man, I got to say, thank you again for that help with my lease, man. The, those renters, they were trying to rake me over the coals. I appreciate hey, it. Happy to do it. You know, hey, they got to make money, but they don't. it doesn't need to be at, at our suffering. All right? And we can talk this out. There's always a conversation to be had, you know? Don't hesitate. Do not hesitate to ever call on me if you need me. Absolutely. Yeah, you got it, Kingston. You got it. Um, uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, Pete joins you here as well. Um, Pete, uh, you show up, and there are probably some some mixed emotions here because it's awesome to see Kingston again, but probably haven't seen Kingston in a minute. Kingston's been kind of like, you know, with Liz and like living his own life for himself for the first time in literally forever. Um, I give him a really big hug that I lasts give him a like... Pretty long. <laughs> and it's like right in front of the counter at Cosmos. It's like a good hug that kind of takes over the entire entryway of the store. <laughs> um, there's just a lot of like quiet, like, hey man, it's good to see you. It's good to it's see so, you, man. Man, it's been really good to see it's you. It's so good yeah. to see you, man. It's been too, I'm sorry we haven't gotten this together sooner, all right? That, that's no, on me. Yeah. I mean, that's on me. No, don't worry about it. Really, don't worry about it. I've been busy, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything's good over at the bookshop? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, yeah, things are, yeah, it's, it, honestly, can I be honest with you? Things uh, are a little slow. 
Word. And I'm still getting used to that, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. I can just go to bed at like 10.30 at night and get a full night's sleep. Yeah. And that's not boring. That's normal. Yeah. I mean, not boring. You're it's making normal. a big shift, a big shift from what your life used to be to what your life is now, right? And that's that takes some adjustment. That takes some growth. And growth is yeah. always going to be uncomfortable because it's different. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. It's so true. Anyway. Let's talk about it more over pupusas. Let's uh, do it. <laughs> um, you two have a beautiful lunch of pupusas. Um, uh, each of you guys give me an insight check. Ooh. 20, but not nat. Cool. Uh, 25. 25. I think both of you can kind of see each other here. Like, I think Pete is seeing, you know, like, Pete ended up moving out of Kingston's place because... Kingston was going to, was, his life was healing. He was going to get back together with Liz. Um, and I think you see how truly well Kingston is doing. I think Kingston, you, you, you clocked a little 60 day sober chip on Pete. Uh, and again, you know, like, like, Ali, what do you think, what do you think Kingston's seeing on Pete with a 25 insight check? I mean, you're, you're probably seeing that I'm, I'm really still trying to figure it out. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't quite gotten there, but I'm sure you're getting that vibe of like, you know, when people put on like their most put together front for like their parents or something. Yeah. So you're really getting like the report card, like school's good. Yeah. Like yeah. a version of me. <laughs> Got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know, maybe I don't, I don't want to get too personal, but did you, did you, did you, did you Rowan, like, you know, like, you know, do do it. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to ask. I'm not trying to get all up in your business. You know, uh, but no, you know. No, I um. Yeah, you know. Ah, oh, God, it was so stupid. It was. I was just having like a pretty hard time, and yeah. I. I'm just so used to meeting up with people not sober. You know, mm -hmm. or I, I pre gamed it a little bit too hard and. Yeah, I think I just really like embarrassed myself in front of her. Pretty much I got there, I met some of her really cool theater friends, and then I barfed in what I thought was a potted plant, but was her lap. And then I oh. started crying and she kind of, uh -huh. I don't really know what happened after that, but yeah. I woke up uh, at her house and she didn't talk to me. And I just kind of like left. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. yeah. That sounds that sounds really bad. Just like yeah. rough. I had like really a little bad. thin blanket put over me, so that was really mm. nice of her to like maybe tuck me in. But yeah, yeah she. But you always I, know if somebody's putting a thin blanket over you, you it's because you it's did a, a bad sign. thing. Yeah, yeah there were thinking. thicker blankets that she could have. Exactly. Kept. She could have given you that. a thicker blanket if if it was in a positive light, but she wanted you to feel a little bit of that, a little bit of that coldness. Yeah. I, I hear that. That's that's rough. I'm eight. Hey, I've gotten a yeah. thin bank, a blanket before. All right, it happens to me. Yeah, bad. yeah. I mean, I get it. It was just a lot. I yeah. And that's you know that's part of the that's part of the journey is realizing when, when you're a lot. Yeah. And you know, that's not everybody wants to take care of you, especially if you just met, even if yeah. they are like really hot. <laughs> <laughs> she uh -huh. was so hot. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. hey man, you know, I'm sorry, you know, I've been busy, you know, got the Liz and Bruce yeah, and yeah. she's moving in and That you know, sounds so great, man. How's it been? Has it has it's it been like incredible. I don't know, man. Uh been weird. It's been weird. I'm having my own like confusing feelings about you know not being in the streets with you guys anymore and not being out all hours of the night and <laughs> you know. Uh, but things are good. We like watch shows on Gladiator Prime and just kind of hang out. Oh, cool. It's just you know, I just like I was just sitting at this little table we got and the light was shining in and she just looked perfect you know it's just like this moment where i was looking at her and i was just like you know it's just like well, uh, nothing i don't want anything else i want not right now and uh yeah. i don't know that's new it's different you deserve it man you really do that's... yeah well hey and you're gonna get it all right and and you, <laughs> and you let me know if yeah, there's anything i can right. do to help you know oh. i don't i don't know many like 
I don't know if I could wingman you. I don't know if that's my my vibe, but I try. I try. I mean, I don't know if you want a fifty eight year old man, you know, hitting the clubs with you, but you know, uh, we can we can figure something out. Um, hey, I'm gonna hold you to that. I'm gonna bring you to a club. <laughs> I mean, hey, you already made me get this tattoo, so. Uh, you know, uh, well, I, we show off our tattoos. Yeah, I pull, I pull on, like take uh, my shirt up in the back. This thing hurt like a mother. All right, you know, <laughs> you didn't tell me that. You didn't tell me how much it was gonna hurt. I'm still hey, mad I'm about sorry. that. I'm creased. Kingston and Pete have finished your wonderful papooses. Um, Kingston, you're gonna head back to drop Bruce off at home and get ready for an evening of work. Pete, um, you you begin to head off. Uh, excited to see Kingston for the first time in a long time. Um, as you head out on the subway, um, no, sorry, not even the subway. You uh, you grab the bus going down 125th Street across the Triborough. that will take you right to Astoria. You're like looking around at your phone. You know the last text you got from Rowan was like a long, long time ago. She has kind of checked out of the unsleeping city. She's mostly in fairy now. Like she is a very different incarnation of the same being that Misty was and has been like, is you ha hasn't left the fairy court that she created in a long, long time. Um, and the fairy court is kind of thriving. It seems like, you know, Seems like she's thriving. And um, let me ask you a question here. Would Pete still follow Priya on any social media channels? <gasps> yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You've been, you've been doing <sighs> you've been doing really well about not visiting her pages. So the algorithm has died down and has not shown you any of her stuff in a while. Her hand superimposed over a beautiful white sand beach, a diamond ring around her finger, and an enormous muscular hand warmly grasping hers, uh, alights at the top <laughs> of your Instagram feed. I I immediately see if anything's tagged or who the the, the giant the giant fucking hand is tagged. Um, I is this a a joke? Was she on Game Changer? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Game Changer only on Dropout. Um, uh, no, no, uh, I I I go to the the profile of mus muscular hand person. John, he, the dude waiting for you on the other end of that link is a guy who is a uh, woodland survival influencer. So he's got like an Instagram around like living off of the land sustainably, but seems to be at a lot of like openings and premieres for stuff. There's like a lot of brands associated with it. He is this huge like a little bit like as broad shouldered and muscular as like superhero actors, but still being very lean. All of his flannel shirts are fitted. He's got this like cow catcher chin um, with this like a perfectly manicured stubble. Um, <laughs> he seems to make his living off of like wilderness brands on his social media. He's got a tremendous amount of followers verified. Can, can I do some sort of roll to look through old tagged photos and see if he is cis? <laughs> Give me a, an investigation check. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. Uh, 23. Um, uh, 23. You look through and see uh, one of the rare moments in his early Instagram where he went off brand, there is a childhood photo of him, which is the best you're gonna get, but it appears that he, it, at an, like an early birthday party, he's like, like missing teeth, little kid photo, um, that you see happy birthday Calvin, which is the name he's still going by today up on a banner behind him. For I throw my phone on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> oh God. 
My hands are so sweaty. I'm so sorry. That slipped. <laughs> um, to to continue these roles, and again, you're over Priya, but there's just this is some kind of some That's kind of thing. Of course. Um, yeah. Huh. Um, you see that his most recent post, other than a re-share of the of the post being like Priya. Priya Danger is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. Like, uh, you know, the post right before that is him. It's like a branded thing where he's like out on like a felled log holding this drink called Cypher, which is Gladiator's branded flavorless nutrition beverage. And him being like all the nutrients you need with none of the hassle, you know. Um, oh my God. Uh, I think I think they deserve each other. You know, it. I think I'm trying my best to think like, good luck, you two. But there is a part of me that's like uh, hurt. Um, if you means. if you have not already, this is one of Pete's triggers. Go ahead and roll that d4. And again, for everyone at home, um, two. Ooh, okay, great. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, for everyone at home, uh, uh, we'll we'll put up the sobriety rule somewhere. The really dangerous role is to roll a one on a d4 in terms of your sobriety, uh, because there are no other dice to go down to to maintain your sobriety. Um, yeah, and uh, and this is just I, I'm able to work and bump myself up dice and, yes. and invest in that. Yeah, but Pete's time. not in a great place right now. No, uh, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not, Brennan. <laughs> um, Kingston, as you walk away from this meeting, by the way, you, uh, you're you heading back uh, to go to your spot. Everything's good. Um, and you, you're you stopped short for a moment. Uh, there was a huge electronics spot on 125th Street, and this uh, a, a buddy of yours ran this electric shop. Uh, it's a fucking ghost town. It's empty. It's boarded up. Um, you look at it, this this, this dude, Reggie, you, you've you known for like 30, 30 some odd years, like a long, long before you were in Vox Populi, you knew this dude. Plaster, spackle, painter's tape up, um, and it's just empty. It's just an empty store. It doesn't even have a for sale sign on it, it's just empty. Is it open or is there like the ability to like see inside? Um, you can see inside. It looks like they've had painters in here, uh, but, you, you like go to open the door and the door can't open. It's like, I mean, it's locked. It's not that unusual that there'd be a locked door, yeah. but it seemed like it happened fucking overnight. This place is gone. Uh, I, te I text Reggie and just, hey, walk past the shop. Seems like rough business. Uh, so sorry to hear that. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. You get a, um, text back from Reggie that says, uh, you get a text back from him real quick that says, what if anything stays? Um, you were, just, you, just, just you, that. Just that uh, you were you were mistaken. You 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 saw something that, that if, for a moment you thought you saw that, but it's not there. There's ellipsis. He says, um, "Hey man," uh, he he goes, uh, "All's well." Got a huge offer to buy me out of the building. A um, uh, lot of money. They're gonna put um, uh, they're gonna put a new some phone company, some kind of front up there. Not sure exactly what. Um, uh, but he says, sorry for the neighborhood shop to go, but it's enough money uh, that I'm thinking about getting a spot uh, probably up in Westchester somewhere. Uh, sorry to not say goodbye before I headed out from the neighborhood. Uh, 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 sorry to see you go. Don't spend it all in one place. Laugh out loud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> written out. Written out fully. Capital L, capital O, <laughs> capital L. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, uh, uh, and Kingston walks back to drop Bruce back off at the apartment. Um, Pete arrives in Astoria um, at the spot you're looking at. Um, this, the spot you found here is a very small room in a house in Astoria. You'd actually be staying in a house out here. Um, 
sick. Uh, it's an upstairs room. It's like an attic. You found it for uh, $750 a month. Wow, amazing. So you arrive at the house to take a look at it. House opens up. Um, this uh, young, skinny looking dude, um, uh, Arab American guy, glasses, uh, kind of little poof of hair on top, wearing pastel blue t-shirt, goes up. Um, he goes, hey, how's it going, Pete, right? Yeah, hey, what's up? Hey, Nasir, nice to meet you, man. Uh, come on in, take a look at the spot. Um, I'm gonna give you, uh, uh, not every roommate is home right now, so I can't show you every single spot, but I can definitely show you your Absolutely. spot and kind of where we're at. Um, thanks for coming out, man. We're, you, you, you would complete the puzzle here. Um, Hey, yeah, good, good to hear. I'm really looking for a spot. This place is really nice. A house. It's not bad, right? I mean, yeah, yeah it's like, you know, it's it's like when it snows, it's like more than a 20 minute walk to, you know, the subway or the nearest bus. But like, you know, hey, you get walking, it's good for your legs. Um, so check it out. Uh, you see that he brings you through. Um, he introduces you to a couple other uh, roommates, um, you get the sense that uh, Nasir is like the guy on the lease. He says, uh, this is my workstation out here, um, which is sort of, I know it's in like a public shared area, but it's just cause that's where I, you know, it's it, it helpful for internet speed. And, and also just like my Ooh. room is kind of small. I, what I do pay, you do? I'm a web designer. So um, I work. Six. I work from home um, here. I'm like working here in the living room a lot, but I do I do pay more. I'm not like screwing you guys out of that money. Um, okay, cool. Check it out. We got a couple of people. This is Josh. Um, you see in the living room, there's just like a curtain. Uh, this young dude, Josh Mendoza walks out. Um, he looks over at you uh, and goes like, oh, hey man, are you, are you coming and looking up for the attic room? Yeah. Uh, hell yeah, dude, I'm Josh. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, hey, good to meet you too. He looks over and says, ha have you introduced him? Nasir goes, so there's a couple that lives here in one of the other rooms. Um, they do, again, pay more than just their room would be. Uh, their names are Lars and Brita. Um, mm. They have a lot of guests over. Uh-huh. Like they're just really like, they have a lot of friends. They don't really have parties. They sort of bring a lot of guests back to their room. So that's kind of something that's going on here. Oh, a lot. oh just as like oh, a yeah. hell yeah. Um, there's cool. one oh, okay. other yeah for sure. Like there's, sex, right? Right. You see, they look at each other. Josh looks at you and is like, <laughs> yeah. It's sex. Okay, they do cool, a lot cool. of sex. Great. Right. I'm working on being straightforward, and uh, you know, in my life. So, yeah, cool. Uh, you see Nasir looks at you and says, yeah, but they're they're chill. Um, there's one other dude that lives here that actually lives in sort of the cutoff part with J Josh goes, he's super rad and super friendly. He's like my best friend. Uh, the door opens, Murph, your character walks in. Fuck! I just punched the wall. <laughs> they took my buster sword. <laughs> I'm so Sorry, man. Who's Thank they? You. Are you uh, like the fr the cops? Is freaking gladiators taking over the mall. You heard the mall close down, right? No, there was a mall. I'm going to my room. <laughs> I'm <gonna> walk away. <laughs> Uh, Wait, sorry, no, I just don't do a lot of shopping. I do a lot of used. <laughs> I like to hunt the bins. <clears throat> you see that Josh leans over and says, um, yeah, the mall got shut down and that that's Cody. I worked at the PAC Sun and Cody worked over at the um, Hot, Hot Topic. Topic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we both kind of landed up cool. here. So we kind of split. We're actually planning on getting some plywood in here and kind of actually partitioning this chunk of the living room off. And we're gonna hang like, we've got like uh, Soul Edge. Have you ever played the game Soul Calibur? Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, so we're just gonna put that like right front and center. What, just like a poster? Or? No, like a sword, <laughs> dude. Oh, for sure, yeah. You're a big you, sword are, guy. Are you interviewing? Are you like here for the room or? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Pete. I'm Pete, cool. what's up? Cool, what's up? 
uh, Night Angel, listen, um, how do you feel about, because this is a point of contention and I could use somebody on my side, how do you feel about mounted size in shared living spaces? Um, you see it in this here, as she says, actually, we don't, um, so we don't need to, we don't need to ask Pete about that because that actually is, has already been a house vote. Um, but there would be a new one if Pete moved in, would there not be? Right. So, cause Josh is on my side. Okay. Yes. I know that Josh, you see Josh goes always dude, mall for <laughs> life. Um, uh, you see that Nasir goes cool. So, so we're, so we just, we, so, uh, we're not going to do that. For pretty much, and um, <laughs> this is what it's like to live here. Honestly, I welcome the here. energy. This hey man, is fun. Hey man, uh, Pete. Actually, I'm gonna head up with you in one sec. See, the seer gets really close, uh, close to you, Cody. It's like for real, dude. I, I am. Go I'm just gonna say it again. You, there, you cannot smoke in here. If you want to go into your room where you pay rent and you want to smoke in there. And you, I still actually sort of demand, because I am on the lease, so you need to open the window to be able cool. to do that. There's actually, uh, we're gonna have a house vote because there's actually no working out in the shared living spaces either. So you can go in your room if you wanna like do your job or whatever, because I'm just trying to do mine. Listen, I pay more for the shared workspace. So Pete, you, you see <laughs> this kind of unfold. Um, I'm trying really hard to not laugh and just be like really invested. Like, whoa, this is, yeah, important combo. <laughs> um, um, uh, so Pete, you, but yeah, you do see the spot. Uh, the, the attic room's not bad. Uh, it'll be hot. At, it would be hot as hell during the summer, but it's October right now, and it's kind of a it's kind of not a bad a bad place to crash for a little while. Um, uh, and it's a sublet, so it's totally month to month. Like it's a it's an illegal sublet, so you're um, speaking my language. <laughs> um, Cool. You and Nasir work that stuff back out. Um, Cody, you head off to the mall that night. Um, uh, and go ahead and give me a stealth check if you'd be so kind. Cody's not that stealthy. Let's see. <laughs> you brought an even bigger sword. Yeah, he's got. <laughs> clank, oh, clank. actually, my stealth, is, my stealth is okay. Ooh, 23. Whoa! Whoa. The riddle running, jumping between each foot. Paco, Paco, Paco. You fucking night angel your way into the empty mall. You are back. The tiles where once Taco Bell was consumed and happy, happy shoppers moved to and fro, all of their favorite stores brought into one central location. You see the hot topic before you. I take my soul edge oh my from my God. back, I put it down, and I take a knee, I put it back on, and I enter the hot topic. You still have your manager key from, the, from your many years of managing this hot topic. You open the gate, push it up, move through. There's still so many treasures in here worth saving. Hopefully tonight you can get like a couple loads done. Um, but but what do you go to grab first? Um, you gotta go Breaking Benjamin, POD posters, um, <laughs> all the it. pro wrestling t-shirts, uh, Adventure Time uh, sort of hats and whatnot, <laughs> uh, studded belts. <laughs> Um, uh, under <laughs> under the studded belts and some of the wrestling tees. Broke alley. <laughs> <laughs> this is from a very Cody is from a very particular time. I don't think Hot Topic has most of these things anymore. <laughs> the Adventure Time hack sold sold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you are scrounging around um, underneath some of the wrestling tees, you grab something, uh, it looks like a giant novel, one of your giant like novelty wallets. It's like this crazy infernal kind of d devil looking book. Um, do you guys sell some of these that like have secret compartments where you like hold a whiskey flask or something like that? Um, as you flip through this, it's just a straight up book. What? It also doesn't smell rad. It doesn't smell like Axe or some of these would be like, 
kind of like cologne or whatever. It smells like nasty, rotten, old meat. It It is a bad smelling book. Um, but it, the, the, the production quality of it is incredible. Like, it's like some of the pages are stitched into the binding with leather cords and shit. There's like nasty ass old runes and stuff. I think Cody is just looking for rad stuff. Just as soon as he sees the, he like skips over all the words. When he sees runes, he's like, fucking hell yeah, dude. Uh, and just like looks for, looks for the weirdest, most occult stuff in it. You think it's Evil Dead merch? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you you find some occult stuff. Um, also, give me a perception check uh, with disadvantage. I have a minus one wisdom. Oh so no! <laughs> that is a nat one. Um, it comes a zero. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all the things that um, Cody doesn't notice. Cody doesn't <laughs> notice. Um, the motes of red light that bubble up from the ground where this book was laying. Nor does he notice the strange pentagram that kind of unseals almost as if an orifice of some other hidden world had just finished belching this book out into the bottom of this hot topic. Cody doesn't notice any of this. You just notice the page that finally has like high Gothic script Latin that you actually think you'd be able to read. Hell yeah, um, I read it. Um, as you read it out loud to sound out the Latin, <sighs> the book erupts in flame as <sighs> A pentagram surrounds you. Uh, the book slams to the ground and a column of fire belches out from it. Um, as it does, you see that the fire is flickering and you see momentary beads of neon light cutting into it and see movements of light coming along these pathways, almost like cars traveling on highways. <laughs> and you hear motors, and the motors are like fucking with the infernal flame. These like, it's almost like this, these like highways made of light constrict and bind. And you see something crawling up out of the flame going, who dare summon me? Give me a, give me a fucking hand! Give me a hand! <laughs> uh, I think Cody is like looking, like just because they have a lot of rad shit. So he mm -hmm. just assumes this is some kind of crazy smoke machine thing. So he's just like looking at how the book works. He's like, this fucking rules. What the? F uh, my name is uh, Night Angel. Uh, AKA As you Cody, grab a hand. You rip this being out of the flame and those highways of light, sort of runic highways, vanish. The fire dissipates and a um, four and a half foot tall devil appears before you standing on the book. I will try to describe this as best I can. Four and a half feet tall is a horned, the, the head of a marmot, so a like marmot headed hamstery or guinea piggy kind of face with curling ram's horns, about the size of a human head on an extremely weak humanoid hairless torso with long clawed hands. But then at the waist of the torso, it is a full four legged capybara body with a long rat tail. So it's kind of like a centaur rat tail with marmot head and then uh, and then a pair of uh, vestigial wings on its torso's back. And you see that this devil goes, oh, holy fucking shit, dude. What the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? What, what the are, fuck? Where am I? Are you, you're in, <laughs> you're home. <laughs> where darkness is born. This is hot topic. Are you Lucifer? Because I've been fucking waiting for you my whole life. <laughs> you see, this devil looks at you and says, 
<laughs> you say the devil Are you looks Lucifer you? because I've been waiting for you? My whole life. <laughs> you see the devil. Oh my god. Um, you see the the devil goes, uh, okay, yeah, I'm I'm Lucifer. I'm I'm, I'm the real devil. Uh, that I mean, yeah. Okay, so this is the real world. You're a human mortal. I'm the devil. I'm not asking these questions. <laughs> I'm not asking these questions. I'm saying this. This is all. This is true. You're I, okay. Holy shit! Ah, the mortal world. Okay, what? Oh, mortal. Answer this riddle. What city are we in? City of sin. Uh, Las Vegas. City. No. Um, <laughs> the other city of sin. It's fucked up here. Oh, we're new. Please let me work for you. Please. We're new. We're. You want to work for me? Please let me work for you, Lucifer. Please. We need to kill Gladiator and save them all, and I will sell my soul just in a second. Holy my soul. shit! You just broached that topic. I didn't have to like <laughs> set anything just up. Take whatever. I do. I need to shit. like. Give blood or what? yeah, blood. Yeah, blood's great. Yeah, shit. Okay, <laughs> just, hold on. Um, do you have a, do you have something we can do? You have something we can. I we can just write? like Andrew WK it, but I just start like I just like grab like a brick or something. Just, fuck, fuck. No, dude. Fuck. No, shut up. Stop. What? No, listen. Do you have something to write on? Something we with a blank blank that we can write on. Uh, yeah, I found this weird fucking book that you came out of. That not could... that, the not the book. How about this? You see, he goes and grabs a WWE poster and unf <laughs> unfolds Whoa! it. Whoa, dude! Oh wait, okay, it's Roman Reigns. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so just on the back of a Roman Reigns poster, you uh, he goes, okay, um, uh, in exchange for working for the privilege of working for me, you will sell me your soul. Full deal. <laughs> well, you need to give me like powers and shit, man. Like yeah. we have to like fucking kill. We have yes, to get powers, rid of powers. We have powers. to get the ball back. I will Does give you powers. Back? Great, great, great. And just you see, he says, "Hold out your hand." Okay, just I have to be able to like freak out and be strong. You got like, it. Pinprick, pinprick of blood. You're good. I just give my hand. <laughs> You see, pricks your finger and says, all right, now put it on the dotted line. See, there's like some Sharpie dots that he just put on the back of this poster. He's like, keep using his hooves to keep it from rolling up. All right, Lucifer, I sell my soul to you. All right, at first I write Night Angel, and then I realize that might be binding, and then I change it to Cody. Um, you, you do it, you see, he goes, great. I'm gonna sign my name as Bazathrax. Don't worry about that. And then you see signs Bazathrax on the line. And he goes, it turns into fire. He goes, holy shit, I can feel it. There's, there's no, the, the, the infernal realms can't reach here. There's some kind of hex preventing them from, Cody, sorry, Night Angel. We we could do a lot of good work here, man. It's wide open field, baby. There's no one else doing what we're doing in town right now. Let's bring the flames of hell to raise Gladiator, and from the ashes, the mall will grow. Hell yes, great, good job. Um, I will. I'll always know where you are. Just say my name. So Lucifer, um, are we? So now that we're working together, are we just gonna get like a bunch of your fallen angels and we're just gonna go like kick those construction guys' asses or what? Cool, so I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a little bit of recon and I'm gonna get back to you about all these plans, okay? What you should do for right you now- You are Lucifer, right? A hundred percent, dude. A hundred percent, would never lie to you about that. I am the person you mentioned, but we got like, <laughs> like you know how you go by night angel, right? Yeah. So so that's like a code name, right? So <laughs> Lucifer is a very powerful name. And so we're gonna go by my code name, which is Bazathrax, okay? It's a secret name. Only you only you and me know about Bazathrax. <laughs> about it, okay? Great. You go home, I'm gonna do I'm some snooping, but you got all kinds of powers now, don't even worry about it, okay? Um, all right. Uh 
Bazithrax. <laughs> you feel filled with infernal might. And um, uh, Pete, uh, you sign on that apartment. You're free to move in whenever you want. You can, I Venmo immediately. Cool. You Venmo immediately. Um, you roll in with like an air mattress that night and um, you see... Cody come home and your Vox Phantasma shit goes wild. That guy wasn't part of the Unsleeping City when he left and has come back part of it now. Uh, can I summon my lime green butterfly? Yes. Butterfly appears. Hey, what's up, man? Oh, hey. Um, what's up? So you moved in? Yeah. Uh, Do you work? Uh, Cody looks uh, in both directions. <laughs> Do you work for Lucifer too? Do you, Do you work for Lucifer? You're doing Lucifer? cool shit. Do you work for hell? Can I do some sort of check <laughs> to see what the fuck is going on? Uh, give me an insight check. All right. 19. Um, this dude has sold his soul in the last 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> hey man, what just happened to you? What, you, are you okay? I'm better than I've ever been. Listen, um, we should go up to the attic because technically I wasn't supposed to ever say Lucifer to anybody and I said it to the first person I saw. <laughs> <laughs> and the walls are thin here and yeah, My come on up, come on up. Yeah, Josh we go up is, Josh is just uh, here. You guys head upstairs. Uh, Iga, uh, what's Iga doing at home uh, as uh, your daughter, Jessica? You see that your uh, husband, uh, Oscar, comes in and goes, okay, the girls, they are downstairs, and, you know, they are um, watching a movie, having a good time. Okay. Um, you don't uh, think I should go down there? Says you can if you want. Actually, uh, I might go see about see how why the pizzas are not here yet. Um, they asked for some blankets and stuff like that. Maybe do we have some up in the up uh, upstairs? Maybe. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. We got blankets. They didn't bring their own blankets though. That what's the parents doing? Isn't that what you do when you go to the sleepover? You go to somebody else's house. You bring your blanket. I'll get them blankets. Sarah only brought the sleeping bag. It's not as fun. She cannot make a tent. Um, oh, okay, okay. They're making tents. You head upstairs uh, to your bedroom. Uh, your uh, what? What is that? What does Iga and Oscar's uh, apartment look like? Um, there's a lot of wood. It like looked like it was decorated really nice in like 1979. Mm -hmm. So there's like a lot of like floral carpet. And like everything is really well kept, but old. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of mismatched prints. Uh, the bed has like handmade quilts on it. Like it's a lot of sturdy furniture that's built to last. Hell yes. Um, uh, you go up, grab some blankets. You pick them up off of a very old wooden chest in the corner of your room. As you pick them up, you see the chest almost has like lichen or moss growing on it, an ancient rusted metal. The chest is carved with thick trees and a heavy latch on the front as it sits in the corner of your bedroom. You bring the blankets and stuff downstairs. Um, you see Sarah says, thanks, Mrs. Lazowski. Um, you hear Dana, another friend of one of the uh, girls over in the corner, whisper over and go, I want to, let me ask, let me ask. Mrs. Mrs. Lazowski, what mm. is a borscht bite? Um, and you see Jessica looks over and goes, guys, no, no. A borscht bite's it's delicious. You, you take a, a little uh, round of sheep's cheese and then the pickled beets, you chop them very, very small. And then you roll the 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 sheep's cheese in the pickled. See, beans, another so girl like goes it. sheep's cheese. It's delicious. It's very good. It's a traditional. You see, Jessica says, "Thanks, mom. Thank you. Enjoy your high sugar treats. I'm not in. I'm not interrupting. I'm not interrupting." You get back upstairs. Um, the chest uh, is askew. 
spirits, what are you doing? Why are you messing around my bedroom? <laughs> so unfazed. Um, you see, <laughs> you see that uh, the uh, the wooden trees carved into the chest sway in the wind. Oh boy. Oh boy, okay. Mishak. Um, crawling out uh, from behind the bed is what to the world looks like a chihuahua, but is actually an incredibly tiny, very old, oh so sick little dragon. Um, <laughs> Mishak flies up onto your shoulder. How are you doing, my little Mishak? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. I give him like a tiny little, I have like a little strip of Jackie that I give him. <laughs> Mishek, what is with this box? You've seen this box before doing this thing? Um, you see that Mishek looks down, the trees sway. Mishek raises his back up into an arch and leaps to the bed and starts whining at you. <laughs> Oh, I pick up Meshek. Um, he cover. scrambles away and goes under your pillow and is whining for you to, to like come to him. Okay, I do that. Uh, as you approach, you see that um, the chest collapses and shrinks in size with a violent jerk and re-expands. You see that it warps and you are seeing the space of the room warp around you. Distances between the walls and the corners of the room are shifting. Hello? Um, the trees begin to fade, almost like something is trying to make the chest smooth. And you see that the box snaps back out and roots and leaves slam out from the chest into your walls and floor. Um, and the chest starts thudding violently into the floor and ceiling. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, light starts to emit, thick green light emitting out from the seam of the chest. Okay, uh, is, can, I, can I try and like settle it down? You can leap on it and try to rodeo I'll, this bad boy. Yeah, I'll try and do that. Um, you leap on it, you hear from downstairs, like, Mom, we're trying to watch a movie! Go, 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 go. It's this... okay, don't worry about it. It's just the, uh, uh, it's the neighbors. <laughs> you hear from next door, liar, it is not the neighbors. You are the one that banged you. You're wearing your shoes inside again. We talked about this. Um, <laughs> you see, um, you hear something from inside the chest going, <laughs> A light. Um, the chest looks like something is trying to wrench the chest open. The light turns to dark. Uh, green, purple, gold, indigo, violet spill out from the chest. Momentarily, the light becomes gray as it flickers. You hear the buzzing and zapping of fluorescent lights. Um, and boom, the chest slams down. Uh, you hear cracking coming from inside the chest and you see the magic of the chest flickering. A chest that has belonged to your family for more generations than you can count. Okay, well, this is new. This is a new thing. It's a new thing. What do we do? Can I do like an arcana check? Yeah, give me an arcana check. Ooh, a nat 20. <laughs> Holy Ooh! shit! There um, you go. Iga, you are a resilient woman. You are tied to the earth. You, like someone wrestling a rodeo steer to the ground, wrestle this chest to the ground and grow some roots of your own as you slam it down. Um, you slam it shut, close it, the light seals. You can feel that whatever was trying to break inside hasn't broken. Something was coming for it, but it didn't get to it. As you step away from the chest that has been covered in trees for centuries, you look and see at the corners at the edge of the forest are ancient Polish wood carvings of skyscrapers set into the wood 
of the chest. Oh no, what are these buildings doing here? No, okay, what? See, I don't like it when they look new, but they look like they've been there for hundreds of years. This is not a good sign for me. Okay, uh, blah. Mishek. <laughs> what, what is it? Uh, Mishek flies over, looks at the buildings, and um, you see uh, on top of one of the buildings is a woman very familiar to you uh, and another man that you maybe have not seen. Um, uh, you do not recognize Ricky Matsui on top of that skyscraper, but you do recognize Sophia Lee. And that's all for this episode. What? We're not even gonna get to the battle, gang. We'll pick that up next time. Um, uh, uh, that is where we are going to leave off for this first episode of The Unsleeping City, what? season two. Hell yeah.